Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Rider Club Radio. Woo! I'm your host, Jeff. I'm Liam. <laughs> hey Liam. Liam, you sound a little sick today. I, I don't know, he sounds pretty normal to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, it's me, Max. And I'm Tomaz. Uh, Liam could not make it today because he's dead. Yeah, we traded Shit. places. He's he's the dead guy. No, he's he's just he's busy. So. <laughs> he has a real life that doesn't involve uh, karate bugman for the month. So it'll just be us three tonight. Don't turn it off yet. It'll be good. We know I you promise. all just tune in for Liam. So uh, five stars at the end of this episode. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> right. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Smash that motherfucking like Buy button. A Shut your mouth, Jeff. <laughs> All right, so Liam's not here, and anybody who's listened to this podcast before is probably aware Liam gives the episode summaries. Uh, because he's not here, we're just not going to do them. Anyway, episode 30, what'd you guys think? Um, All right, so. Ep- I'm kidding. Which one? We're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I wrote down some episode summaries, so bear with me. As we jump into episode 30. Oh, I guess up front I should say we're doing episodes 30, 31, 32, and 33 yeah. of Common Rider Build. Yeah, that would make go. sense. We got them. Uh, I'm off my game because Liam's not here yelling into my ear hole. <laughs> well, you got I us. I got used to it after three years. You got us goons, but we don't like to yell. I got uh, two very low-key dudes on the show with me today. Yep. <laughs> you got it All easy. Right, so let's... Let's hop right into episode 30. When we last left our heroes, they were in a big, pointless fight scene at the border between Hokuto and Toto. Misora shows up and has her glowy green eyes again. Fucks everything up for Stalk. Starts immediately negating everything he did that was cool before. He's such and a cool dude. not only this, she announces that she is the Queen of Mars... Vernage. 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 Virginia. Virginia. (laughs) And uh, then she, like, completely just teleports everybody away. She's like, fuck this fight. This fight's over. We're leaving. Yeah. I love that everybody can teleport. (laughs) Everybody except the heroes can teleport. Mm -hmm. Even Sawa can teleport. Remember? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I do remember. What a great show. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cut to... They have, uh, they have, like, the weirdest scene that I've seen in Common Rider, maybe ever, where they all lay around in a circle on the ground. Uh, well, actually, first off, they sit on the ground like a kindergarten class in front of the Queen of Mars, Vernage. And they, like, play Q&A with her. And we learn that her soul won't last much longer inside Misora's body. And that someone named Evolt is responsible for what happened to Mars. And uh, there is some heavy, heavy implications Gee, I here. wonder who that might be. The- <laughs> I don't know. It's probably not an established character in the show. Probably no. not. It, they'll show up in the last episode and be a robot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, she comments on Banjo not knowing who he is, and then passes out. And then the weirdest scene in Common Rider history happens. <laughs> I where love they all this scene. are laying What is it? I they're love... laying in a <laughs> They're laying in a circle on their bellies on the ground with little paper dolls and they play themselves <laughs> in a little play. It's so funny. Well It's great. It's it's so cute, I guess I should say. It is it is cute and it's funny, but I think it's like referencing a style of comedy that's like distinctly Japanese that I just don't understand where it came from. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it out of this. So, I guess your guess is as good as mine. Uh, they figure out Banjo's memory gets fuzzy after his parents died, which is also revealed. Um, Banjo then picks up a piece of a meteor, which I don't remember where that came from. Oh, what happened I don't was... Know either. Uh, what happened was, uh, Bloodstalk hit him with, like, his fucking red electricity energy and uh-huh. melted his belt. And his belt oh, had yeah. the dragon. So, he's holding, it. like, the belt, the melted belt. He's holding oh, the remains yeah. of his belt in the dragon his, bottle. His splash got splashed? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a bottle appears out of it, and he's too dumb to see anything strange about it, and Sento just doesn't mention it. 
He's like, what's wrong? And Sento says, nothing. <laughs> uh, uh, if I told a, you your brain would explode, theme. so... This is a recurring theme in these episodes of Sento just not saying anything to somebody. Or saying everything. <laughs> There's a lot of information dump in these episodes, so you apologize if my episode summaries get a little long-winded. Uh, Misora wakes up. Uh, she hears the voice of Vernage in her dreams and wakes up. And Sento has created a new power-up item for Cross. And uh, Sento and Misora have their fourth or fifth heart-to-heart scene in the show so far. It happens yeah. pretty frequently. And Misora takes being the Queen of Mars exceptionally well, all things considered. <laughs> it really it feels does. like she already got over it, and now she's just thinking yeah. about everything else. M- moving on. She's like, so I'm the Queen of Mars, huh? Alright, yeah, well, this makes shit's sense. crazy. And uh, we flash over to the Pandora Tower where we get the first hints that Gentoku is going to go rogue. Uh, yeah. Shitter. He's pissed <laughs> that Toto was invaded. And uh, we also learned during this scene that Gentoku has a device, uh, like a chip, installed in him to control him in case he does go rogue. Yeah. Uh, I call this the hurt button. button. Or the hurt, yeah, hurt button. There you go. If you remember a few episodes back, Sento asked the Prime Minister of Toto for a Dalark <laughs> for seemingly no reason. Well, that turns out to be a part of his master, Keikaku. And he's labeled a traitor to Toto for stealing one dollar from the Prime that. Minister. He asked for the dollar. <laughs> he's just, uh... They're just like, it's the plan, right? He stole the dollar. And I guess my question is, why did he need to have the dollar then? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, why... <laughs> Why did he need to go through the act of, like, oh, can I borrow a dollar? All right, so now that I have this dollar, I can say that I stole a dollar from you. It's like, why didn't I just say that, like, you stole from me or any other... Re- I, I could have just given he, the order. He didn't have any money. He wanted to get some homies. <laughs> I'd love to be on that phone call with the Prime Minister where he's like, Hey, PM, remember when you loaned me that dollar? I want you to label me a traitor for it. What? <laughs> well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Th- this will give you probable cause to send the rest of the team after me, which means there won't be an invasion. Well, Sento had no idea that was going to happen. They could Sento's just, whole plan the whole was that he was going to... doesn't even need to exist. You'd just be like, oh, no. yeah, I'm just going to go do this. and Just label like, me a traitor, labeled... whatever. Yeah. Exactly. He's labeled a traitor so that he can invade Sato without causing all-out war between Toto and Sato. The fact that the other two common riders get sent there as well is uh, there should have been a war anyway because it's still an invasion regardless if you're, if you're like chasing someone or not. Yeah, that's yeah. not how borders work. But anyway, it's a children's television show. What does do matter? Uh, they all fight robots. They fight a bunch of robots. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the shit out of some robots. We f- we flash over to I'm I'm guessing Nanba Heavy Industries, where Chairman Nanba and the guys of the the PM of Sato is playing golf. Rogue overhears him monologuing about his evil plan, and we get another hint that he's gonna go rogue. They're placing these little st- stepping stones, right? Yep. Uh, we also learned during the scene that uh, Stalk and Soichi are not really the same person. Uh-huh. They're arguing with each other inside his body. I found that so incredibly interesting because I hadn't even really considered that up to that point. And then I'm like, of course, of course, that makes total sense. It's like, and, they, yeah, and then they reveal like the whole, like, oh, the Queen of Mars bullshit. And it's like, oh, well, then that makes sense why, you know, he's in charge and why that's going on and why he... It seemed like you had changed so much ever since I hate it. Um, the box went off. But then it's like, <laughs> well, it's not when the box went off. It's when he went to Mars. So he came back a different person. And that's why he's been doing all this stupid bullshit. I, I hate it. Why it's, do you hate uh, it? I'm, I, I I'm hate, in the middle. I hate things just being like, oh, there's a ghost man in my body. <laughs> <laughs> or like, I wish that it was just like... Um, Soichi got murderized by some Martian on Mars and then got his face swapped. I think that would be a lot, a lot more interesting. 
This is my only problem with it is it's going to be uh, more and more forced drama between Misora and Soichi as the show goes on. Yeah. In a later episode, some absolutely confoundingly dumb shit happens because of that. So I'm not looking forward to more of that, but I do like the conflict that Soichi still exists. In some manner, even though it seems like he is still damaged from the experience and it's not like you know mm. it's not like he's intact on the inside and it's like oh please help me i'm so helpless it's it's more of like a what the hell are you doing now like he's mm. he's been complicit the whole time uh, yeah or maybe it is soichi actually talking when it's soichi's voice and he's just like being held hostage pretty much and being maybe that would be that's more interesting I, than being that's how forced. i took it um, There's two anyway. little people in the inside of them, and one of them's pointing a gun at the other. <laughs> <laughs> Save the line, motherfucker! Yeah. Uh, our three heroes try to ride or kick through the Pandora Tower, but the wall just slides open, which I found really comical. <laughs> I don't know if they meant it to me. I think it was but, supposed to be comical. Um, they fight the Gear Brothers again, and the fight the goes exactly brings. like every other fight that has ever happened. The Engine Brothers loses first, and then the other one becomes the dreaded Heck Bros again. Yeah. And somehow uh, they're still all alive. Fuck like, Why are they... Yeah. I wish they're still just alive. Hurry up just, and die. just like how they're still doing the transformation sequence for Rabbit, Rabbit, and Tank, Tank. Which I'm glad. I, I can't believe that the fucking Heck Bros are still around. And it, they every fight with them goes the exact same way now. Mm-hmm. Which is starting to really fucking butter my buns. I'm getting real pissed off about it. <laughs> I'm not getting upset about it. It's just sort of a, well, they have nothing else to do with these characters, and maybe they need them just around kill later. Them. <laughs> they, just kill they them. They don't want to... They want, like... Uh, Make the other one turn into heck bros. Just do something different. <laughs> <laughs> some some smashes. Uh, but uh, the the difference this time is Pandora Tower starts attacking them with bad CGI as well. Oh wait, there are some new smashes, aren't there? Yeah, yeah, th- yeah. the clone smashes, clone smashes, which are smashes that have been dipped in a tub of black paint. Yep. Mm-hmm. They've ran out of gold paint. They got all the black paint left over from Hazard. <laughs> But Sento gives Banjo the upgrade knuckle. That's the important part. I don't remember the name of it. Do you guys? Uh, no. The burning knuckle? Maybe it is the burning knuckle. Um, that just doesn't sound right. The hot fist? But the the <laughs> hot fisting action? <laughs> uh, the end of the episode has Sawa show up and talk to Misora about a deep, dark secret she found in Banjo's background. And they draw it out like... Way long. Also, Sawa implies that she, like, asked some D to get that. Data. Yeah, that does get implied a lot. She's like, like the you big don't dark know secret. how I got it. <laughs> um, the big dark no. secret is that he's an alien. Woo! And then the episode ends. So what did you guys think <laughs> of episode 30? Uh, there was a lot of things in it that are weird. Some new things, I guess. Like... Like what you just mentioned, um, Banjo possibly not being human, which was not hinted at really at all throughout the entire this, this series. Does, I mean, the only hint that you could possibly pick up is that and it's sort of like one of those things that's like, hey, we had that before, so we'll make that be a hint. And it's that his hazard level raises faster than everybody else's. Mm-hmm. I guess that's true. But he got the sa- he got, you know, Judge Doom dipped him just like Sento, so I don't know. Yeah. He got I mean, the dip. He's also a boxer, so maybe his hazard level raised faster because he's a fighter naturally, but Yeah, I guess nah, that he's a space makes- man. Yep. I yeah, know. I I don't know if it's really an ass pull or if it really matters. Like I, I think it's a really fine isn't, plot development. Sento really isn't that far behind on like the hazard level, so I don't see how that really is a thing. I don't know. I don't know either. It's uh, it feels I'm, like I'm a weak, fully sold. It feels like a weak connection to make, but. I'm okay with it just because it makes his character a little... I mean, it makes his character a lot more interesting. 
his character, he's become the main focus of the plot mm-hmm. for yeah. these past few episodes, <clears throat> which is something a secondary character doesn't normally get after their introduction. So I appreciate that. I don't, I don't really uh, like how, f- like, certain plot points are just, like, BT dubs, here's this big old plot dump right here. I like it. I like things that are kind of, like, hinted at, so you're, like, kind of formulating what this is in your brain the whole series, and you're like, oh... I guess, all in all, it's a pretty good episode. I mean, even with all these silly plot points, all these crazy Martian plot points, it's still good, (laughs) yeah. There's still an opportunity for them to move this into into a direction that'll, like, knock our socks off. And I'm not saying that this is a bad direction, it just feels a little bit out of left field. Right. I would would just say... That if they were going to draw out the plot point and try to drop hints, the show hasn't proven to really be that great at doing that. Uh, like the whole Soichi being a bad guy thing. Um, or Sawa being the traitor twice. Uh, yeah, Sawa being the traitor twice is like the only thing that really gives me pause about the writing in this show so far. <laughs> Like, I could not believe that happened. <laughs> it was a little ridiculous. Well, um, well, in the beginning, Soichi wouldn't tell anybody about his second job. Yeah, that was, like, painfully obvious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's... There's sometimes when, a, like, a villain reveal seems obvious only because, like, you know, you have meta-knowledge. You're genre-savvy, right, as a watcher? Yeah. But... Even a tiny child who'd never watched Kamen Rider before would be like, That guy's a villain! I don't know if it would be incredibly obvious to a child, but to someone that's watched, you know, enough of anything, um, See, I you're, you're going to notice I... it. But even, like, within universe, you might consider, you know, considering the fact that uh, your main character is a fucking scientist. Uh, oh, well, I'm staying with this guy. And he's not here uh, sometimes. Whenever he's not here, uh, Bloodstock is out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I've um, never seen Soichi and Bloodstock in the same room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think the only reservation that Sento could have in that situation is, well, he can't be because, you know, he's the person taking care of me and that would cause him to be blinded to the fact. There's, um, there's like a problem with that idea, though, is as soon as you find out that Soichi's the one who gave him the belt, how could so- how could he possibly not realize that this guy's involved with this shit? Yeah, real the, heavy how in the some hell way. Does he have that shit? Yeah. And Why is there the, all this technology the, uh, in the basement? The Pandora panel in the in the wall too. And I think the panel was what tipped him off, right? He thought about it, right? He asks him about that's, it, and he's like, that's he's how like, nah. figured out he was Yeah, he, he stole it back from, um, God, what was the name of the corporation that got dissolved that was the villain for a while? Oh, Faust? Faust. Yeah. Yeah, Faust. he stole it from Faust when he left, and he took his daughter with him, and it was like, yeah, it was all, like, very convenient, but, yeah, I don't know, there's... There's being obvious to us because we're genre savvy, and then there's just being obvious, and I think that falls into the being obvious realm. But again, that is that's not episode thirty. I think we got off on a tangent. Uh, yeah, a little bit. But, yeah, fuck it. My only real problem with this episode, like I'm not fully sold on Banjo being an alien yet. The next three episodes do a better job, I think, of cementing that as a plot point that's going to be interesting. Uh, the one thing that's pissing me off. Endlessly, It's maybe a little thing to everybody else, but repetition drives me nuts. And having to watch the same exact fight with the Engine Brothers <laughs> over and over and over again is starting to piss me off. Did <laughs> seeing Dan in every fight in X-Aid, did that drive you nuts? How he just like appeared Dan? out of nowhere and was like, Hey, what's up? I'm gonna fight. <laughs> uh, that did bother me with... Uh, Fuck, what was the guy? Machine Chaser at the beginning of oh, Drive, right. where he would just show the fuck up and fight the same way every time. And then yeah, leave. You'd just be waiting yeah. in the road for uh, Shinosuke <laughs> to drive by. It only really Literally bothered me in recent memory with um, Kamen Rider Kronos. Yeah, that got pretty repetitive, too. 
It's like, oh, here's this guy. He's super ultra powerful and he can kick all your asses, but he's just going to leave. I'm sure they'll what die are... soon. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, what did you guys think of our first hints at uh, Gentoku changing sides? Um, I wouldn't say it was obvious, but starting with episode 30, they were dropping enough bread com- breadcrumbs that by the time that it happens, uh, it's sort of like a, oh, well, no shit moment. Mm-hmm. Um, you felt like they took too long to Yeah, they reveal. took too long to reveal it, whereas, like, if he had just come right out and done it in, like, episode 30, that would have been like a, wait, hold it, what? See, like, I don't know. There's there's the opposite side of that coin where it happens, you're like, what the fuck? Why? Yeah. Why? That's so out of left field. There right. was no build-up to that at all. Like, the the reason, which we'll explain later, is so incredibly convenient. It is. But it's, it's like, it makes you wonder as well, like, why didn't we hear anything about this up until this point? Right. Uh, but, I mean, I guess maybe it just never came up. <laughs> I mean, maybe it, it comes up in, like, the supplementary material. Like, the uh, the Rogue um, yeah. special. I haven't been watching any of that, I, so... I watched the first part. It was alright. I liked it. I'm not, I'm not a supplementary materials kind of guy. Yeah, you if to... you don't got your shit in your main show, I don't care. <laughs> you have to read it in a comic that was released as a campaign bonus. <laughs> Dude, they really did that with X-Men 2. Maybe it was the original X-Men. Because I went to the midnight showing and they gave everybody a comic. And they explained, (laughs) like, a bunch of shit from the movie in the comic. That's the first Uh, time I remember that happening. so lazy. Just put it in the fucking movie. Well, if it's not in the movie, it's not necessary. Uh, If something doesn't make it in the movie and you feel like it's required, it's possible that there were outside influences and, you know, they had to leave it on the cutting room floor because... Of Don't reasons. make excuses for 20th Century Fox. <laughs> I'm making. I'm not making excuses for Fox. I'm making excuses for the people that made the movie uh, to feel like they were dissatisfied with the final product and then had to put out a comic. I mean, I guess that's true, but the writers of the movie don't really make the comic. I think the comic was by uh, Greg Pak, was the artist, and I think maybe... Only, I only know. you would know that, Jeff. Yeah, no one cares but me. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, the writers for the movie didn't write the comic. It was a comic book writer who wrote the comic. Well, then, how did they have the information? I don't know. That's a whole, like, behind-the-scenes thing that just blows my mind. I got no clue. Well, um, anyway. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Is that all we had to say about episode 30? <laughs> um, I like the knuckle. I think it's cool. I yeah, like non-standard the- weapons. It's a cool yeah. little thing. We haven't really seen a knuckle weapon in a, since, like, Fies. It fits Banjo very well, as well. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he's Punch Man. Yeah, when he got a sword, I was like, he doesn't use a sword. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that they eventually gave him, like, a knuckle weapon, because he's a boxer. Giving him a sword makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here's that here's that new Street Fighter Eight where you can play as Balrog. He's got a fucking sword. <laughs> he's, he's got two swords instead of two gloves. <laughs> They're taped around his hands. Right, that'd he be like ha- he still has the boxing gloves on, just with swords in them. <laughs> that'd be like if Dudley used swords. Yeah, yeah oh, exactly. Yeah, they're like they're both boxers. Good one, good one, Tomas. <laughs> I don't know Balrog. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, got him. Anyway, uh, I just... if everybody's ready, we'll move on to episode 31. Sure. Okay, I think we got everything that we need to out of there. Maybe? I did, Maybe. like, the thing that you were complaining about with the little scene with the dolls. I, I just thought it was something fun that they were doing. I didn't I didn't look too hard into it. Um... I was just <laughs> confounded. I thought it was fun, but I thought it was just confounded me. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> I, I like that the Sento and the Banjo doll got real close to each other. <laughs> Sala had shipper face going yeah. on in the background when it happens. <laughs> Gasp. I think also uh, when Banjo is asleep in the bed, he has the two dolls and he's holding them close <laughs> to his chest. <laughs> That's smiling. Like, he did do that. On to episode 31. <laughs> Moving on. 
Our, our heroes are still trapped inside Pandora Tower, which uh, Bloodstalk is actually controlling with Pandora's box. It turns out that's a control unit for the tower. And he's sending out, like, uh, comical boxing gloves to hit him in the head and shit. He's, he's going uh, real Andross all over the place. Yeah. Like, making <laughs> pillars and cubes fly and out of nowhere. Very Trapping Star them Fox in laser for boxes. Super Nintendo. Right. Um, Banjo's kicking ass with his burning knuckle upgrade, though. He, de- he defeats engine bros first, like they always fucking do, and his idiot brother becomes heck bros. And uh, the scene change that we normally accomplish by just throwing a guy through a window... Or uh, just throwing him off camera and they appear in a different location happens a little bit, like way better, I'd say. Not a little bit better. Because they're inside the tower, Bloodstalk just uses his control panel to change the location around them. Just makes it the hollow deck. I think it's literally the only time I've ever seen in Common Rider where they offer a reason for a scene change. Yeah. That I isn't, can't think of any. That really. isn't like really obvious or stupid. Like. There yeah. were scene changes in other shows sometimes. Like, in Kuga, you would just literally drive your motorcycle over there because you had to be over there where you weren't around the public. Yeah. Well, what do you, I'm sure there were the scene level changes. Select? That, what about the level select yeah. shit? Oh, yeah, level select. But that felt... That made sense. It made I, sense, I but to, I didn't like it. <laughs> I wanted to add a little asterisk here that we know that there have been scene changes that make sense throughout Common Rider history. Please do not tell us any. We got it. <laughs> yeah. My my favorite scene changes is when they just grab each other and then like jump through something and they're like, oh, yeah. here we are out in the quarry. You, th- <laughs> you throw a guy out the window and suddenly you're underneath the bridge in Tokyo fighting. <laughs> or if you run sideways off screen and then you start fighting again when you get to the stadium. Yeah, the stadium yeah. stairs. <laughs> they run through a door in some secret hideout and then jump and they're at the stadium and they fight there. And it's also nighttime. Uh, but the surroundings become this big beach with, like, picture frames all over it. And I have uh, a little bit of an artistic theory of what uh, the purpose of all this is. Uh, photos are physical forms of memory. And they're empty, representing both Sento and now Banjo, who have no memory well, of their previous lives. That's real clever. Hmm. It's actually pretty damn artistic, it's, and I liked it a lot. It's really... It's... Good, good, good eye there. I was just I'm thinking they boy. did it for, like, the sake of the cameras, so you could have interesting camera shots with literal framing. I'm sure that that was a reason also, but... Because... <laughs> not as artistic. Not as artistic. Not as artistic um, as melting clocks. <laughs> Uh, Gentoku shows up and transforms into Rogue. Uh, Banjo remembers his dead girlfriend again for the first time in about 15 episodes and fights him. He's real mad about it again. Uh, Gentoku, for his part, just straight up tells him, Stalk orchestrated everything, including killing your GF, so you become stronger. That's all he cares about. Now hit me. And, uh, he just gets his shit rocked by Rogue afterwards, because he's having, like, a mental breakdown. He's like, oh, my girlfriend died so that I could become stronger, but your girlfriend died uh, to trick you before, so what's the diff? You were at fault both times. Bonjo's greatest weakness is his ears. Like, he just needs to wear earmuffs when he's fighting so that they can't distract him. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) If if no one distracts him, he almost always wins. Yeah. He doesn't job. Um, we hop on back to the pit where Sala continues discussing the information she found about Bonjo and is uh, really, really weird about how she found out all that info. Uh, people are better not better off not knowing, she which SDs. is potentially gross. Yes. Yeah, like, like I mentioned before, she's, she's a DSer. Look, everybody's been a DSer once in their lives, am I right? <laughs> am I right, guys? <laughs> Uh, yeah. R- r- right? Yeah. Right, guys? <laughs> yeah. Sure. But, she finds out Bonjo uh, was a test subject at the lab where they held Pandora's box. And he was born after a two-month pregnancy <gasps> uh, to a guard who was uh, guarding um, some sort of a... It was like a Mars probe. rover? Yeah, a Mars rover. Uh, and some goop fell off of it and went up her Gucci... 
Which was fucking like that had to be what we're supposed to be seeing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no way around that. Uh, uh, yeah. But like, so he has some sort of Martian soul in him. Like Misora's bangle has Vernage inside, and uh, he has like ev- she has evidence that he has straight up extraterrestrial DNA. So they're not half-assing the reason why she thinks he's an alien. There's, like, right on the thing it says, he's an alien. Yeah. (laughs) Like, this machinery somehow can just tell. It's like, yeah, that's alien DNA, by the way. Yeah. (laughs) We just had it on file. We just knew. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, back on the beach, uh, Sento finishes his inconsequential fight with the Heck Bros and uh, starts fighting Rogue. But Rogue hugs him and tells him all the secrets. Uh... The fact that he has a bomb in his belly. <laughs> the fact that the PM of Sato is actually Chairman Nanba. And the fact that they have the plan to take over the world going on, or whatever the fuck plan. The Nanba Empire plan. And uh, Rogue lets himself get fucked. And uh, falls on the beach and is real angry at the sand. <laughs> and our heroes so, go further into Pandora it's Tower. It's so rough and it gets everywhere. <laughs> I just felt um, like the heck bros like they're they're weren't they good at some point like weren't they good at what they did for at least a couple episodes now they're just straight up charging someone in close range like trying to close distance yeah. with someone that's using a fucking cannon weapon like oh yeah, let me just run at him and punch him while he's charging this shot that's gonna work the thing about common rider power levels is that it doesn't work <laughs> like it doesn't work like Dragon Ball power levels where you shoot your beam and it doesn't hurt the guy so he's like a hundred levels above you or whatever. You just become really, really stupid when you fight somebody who's stronger than you and that's how you lose. <laughs> yeah, they, they just become wharf. They're, yeah. They're there to... They just get... They're there to like make someone else look strong. That's it. They, they get thrown against the wall over and over and over again and that's their whole fight scene. But the fucking the heck bros are still stronger than Greece. So when Greece starts fighting them in another episode, uh, we'll get to that. But <laughs> um, Sento again lies about knowing something when they ask him why Rogue would give them this info. He's like, I don't know. Why didn't he just go? Because he's got a bomb in his gooch. I don't know. Just tell uh, him. Maybe maybe it's word sensitive bomb. Words. When you when you say bomb, it goes off. I don't know. <laughs> That's a pretty shitty bomb. <laughs> you could just not use the word bomb and go. Uh, I don't. I don't really think there's Maybe. a good reason. No, That's, uh, this happens a lot in every type of media. This isn't just a Japanese media thing. But I watch a lot of Japanese media, and it happens in everything. Yeah, where, where a character knows can be something. Yeah, prob- yeah, problems can be solved if they something. talked, but they don't talk, so the problems keep going. And so the only reason that there's conflict is because our characters <laughs> are too stupid no to talk about. Says it. anything? Yeah. yeah, yeah, just like real Absolutely. life. Absolutely, <clears throat> there's you know, that happens all the time in just real life. Just talk. So. <laughs> yeah. But it's like in real life, you keep stuff to yourself because nobody asks, right? And you think like, or maybe it's dangerous info that you don't want them to know. Like maybe they'll get in trouble or something if they learn it, or maybe they'll blab it to somebody. But Sento has none of those reasons. He's with his two most trusted friends. And they're like, why would he tell us this? And he's like, I don't know. Or when he's trying to hide the fact that he's on the phone with, um... As with I, Bloodstock. With Bloodstock. Like, what, yeah. why are you trying to hide the fact that you're on the phone with Bloodstock? I, I, I don't understand why he hides so much of the information that he does, because it's a, it's a private. either either it doesn't matter and he can tell them, or he's just going to tell them later anyway. Like, Do you want, yeah. he Do you want doesn't gain anything by hiding your conversation? it. Come on, man, it's private. I'm talking to my best friend, Bloodstalk. Just go away. <laughs> so our heroes confront Bloodstalk, and uh, they transform and fight some spray-painted black smashes... And which are clone smashes, which they can kill with impunity because there are no people in them, so it's fine. No more, no more heroic heartache for having to kill human beings. Uh, no more characters. Just kill the clone smashes. <laughs> I forgot uh, why they were stronger. I don't know. 
they're, they're spray painted black, so they're more intimidating. Yeah, black absorbs the energy better, so. Oh. Uh, uh, they sure. can't go out on hot days, though. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I can buy that shit, whatever. <laughs> um, but Banjo and Stalk start fighting, because Banjo now blames Stalk for his girlfriend's death that he cares about suddenly. Again. Because it's plot relevant. Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, oh, and, rogue blab, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he pretty much straight up confirms to Banjo that he's that he's an alien. Well, no, not that he's an alien. That happens later. Uh, that he orchestrated his girlfriend's demise. It's tough to keep this shit straight, everybody. But then they he just fucks him up using Pandora's box. He just starts shooting Pandora box lasers at him. He crushes and- Grease against a wall. Grease is just out. It does not pay to be the third writer no. in the Kamen Rider series. Like, no. he, he was he was top dog for a little while, and then as soon as he became a good guy, that was it. Mr. Jobs. <laughs> Do you think he's going to get another form? I don't think so. I really hope he does, but I doubt it. I haven't seen anything. But, uh, Sento jumps in front of another Pandora box blast that's meant to kill Banjo. And then, uh, what happens every time a hero gets knocked out of their transformation around the villain happens, where he just kicks him a lot? He, like, kicks him around on the floor oh, yeah. a lot? Yep. Mm-hmm. And, uh, then he starts choking him. He's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you, best friend, right in front of you. I know you ship it. I'm gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> and, uh, Banjo throws, like, a really long pity party for himself on the ground. Yeah, he does. And... He's just, like, crying on the floor. And surrounded and he by eventually, <laughs> but, yeah, he eventually gets up and he's like, "No, I'm I'm the fucking best," and he has glowing red eyes. If you were ever wondering if he was really an alien or not, and uh, Stalk shoots him with another Pandora laser, but he absorbs it into the bottle that he made, and he transforms into Cross Z Magma. Cross, Which has the magma. coolest fucking transformation that I've seen in a long ass time. <laughs> he gets lava dumped on him. Yeah, and then like fucking like lava dragons come out and turn into dragon statues and then explode. The longest, yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um. Then the fuck he are you uses. Talking his... about? <laughs> I don't. I don't want to lay on that fucking meme for one second longer than I have to. Please don't. Uh, he uses his red hot muscles to obliterate the black spray painted smashes, and then he beats the shit out of Stalk. And uh, Banjo grabs Pandora's box. Eventually, Sento's like the box, idiot, the box. And he grabs it, and uh, he controls Pandora Tower, so he's probably an alien, guys. Mm -hmm. You can't say anything against it anymore. Uh, And Stalk is, like, having a moment to himself. Like, he's just rambling to himself on his knees. Yeah, And he says, I have to get... I have to get the ultimate driver in stores soon, only $60 at your local Toys R Us. And then the heroes escape. And Sento's like, I don't know what he was talking about. He, he better get that belt soon, because Toys R Us is closing. Yeah, that's true. You might be able to get it for 10% off. You better hurry. 10% uh, off? Jeez, they're not having a fire sale. <laughs> the final scene of the episode uh, reveals that Sento's real dad, Katsuragi Shinobu, father of the devil scientist Katsuragi Takumi, was the one in charge of studying Bonjo back in the day. So what did you guys think of episode 31? What a tangled web. <laughs> what a tangled web we weave when first we yep. go to Mars. <laughs> 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 Mars ruined everything. Really, it did. We should have just stayed off of that shit. Everything would have been fine. Uh, Mars has kind of been involved with everything since the beginning, so I'm actually kind of glad they're getting back into dealing with the fact that this is all alien technology instead of focusing yeah. on the interpersonal conflicts within the country that's all divided up because of the alien technology. You know, you know what would have been funny? What? If, uh, if the beginning of the series was just the movie Rocket Man. <laughs> 
I don't think anyone has ever seen that movie. It's just me. It's just me. <laughs> I've probably seen it, but it was a long time ago. I forgot it's, what the actor. It's actors. a joke for Jeff. Was, for... was that was Kevin Spacey Rocket Man? I, no, it was. Um... Now he was a movie that was exactly like that, though. It yeah, was that was some... K Pax. Who was it? K Pax. No, yeah, okay. I don't remember. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Um. I am. I don't know. I still am not sold. On the alien thing. I mean, I understand... You already have an alien, right? You already have two aliens. You got the Queen of Mars, and you got Evolt, who is super obviously Bloodstock. We learn he is later. Spoilers. But, uh, God, I hope people don't listen to this without finishing all the episodes. Don't listen to this in parts, <laughs> everybody. Yeah, I don't uh, think I don't think the people that listen to this show are the type to not watch the episodes as soon as they come out, so... Mm, that's probably true. And if they don't, then they might not even watch the show and they just listen. But I don't think people are doing that with Bill. <laughs> I think people just did that with no. Ghost. Awesome people voices. did that with Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. I but like, we already have two aliens, right? Do we really need another good guy alien character to push this story along? I understand it from, and I'm going to keep saying this from a plot perspective, from a, how they're writing it, because sure. Evolt. Uh, said that he needed the perfect body. And yeah. the reasoning they're giving for that... Did he say that? Yes. The, he's, he's going full Orochimaru. He's, he's, oh. he's going for Banjo's body because Banjo's body is part alien. Whereas... Um, Freaking weird! I I just watched all these episodes today, and I don't remember him saying that at all. It was I just in the episode he that we watched the belt. that you just described. He needs the belt because he has the perfect host, which is Banjo's body, because his yeah. hazard level has been increasing. I, I do remember him saying that he he would be out of his body soon. I remember that. I, I, he did say that he wanted um the a new body, like a a more powerful, like perfect body. And I guess that's well, yeah. why he wanted Banjo to get stronger. I don't know why yeah, he the, Sento the reason, to get stronger. But... I don't know about Sento, but the reason he needs Banjo stronger is actually information that comes in a couple later episodes about the, the new driver. And it's because the new driver is actually Mars technology. And it can only... Uh, and it says this like on some on-screen text that goes across the screen. A far ahead, man. We'll get to that. We'll get to <laughs> it. But there is the a reason, reason why... He... The reason why he wants Sento to get stronger is because Sento getting stronger drives Banjo to get stronger. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. Mm. Uh, yep, I'll buy that. Uh, I'll buy it for a dollar. We, we learn that not only is Banjo, like, an alien, but he's also, like, a specific alien that's capable of utilizing Pandora's box. Which, I, it's not stated outright that Pandora's box is, like, uh usable by like every martian or whatever because what i'm taking from these episodes this is like a fan theory let's fan theory for a second here guys thought experiment yeah let's have a thought experiment <laughs> um i don't think evolt evolt whatever is a martian oh yeah I no think, not at all well, think i think he's just evolt like a... Oh, is like a different alien. He's Galactus? Yeah, he goes from planet to planet and obliterates the planet and gains power from that somehow. Yeah. Um, the, yeah maybe they the just... Martians found Pandora's box on a different planet. Yeah. The, the evil technology is actually something that is not just like Martian. Um, I misspoke earlier when I said the belt came from Mars. It was simply that the belt was left on Mars... Uh, I saw some discussions about, like, the technology of Evolt and, like, what all of the different parts of his suit symbolize. Uh, and he's apparently supposed to be some kind of intergalactic destroyer that goes around and yeah. manipulates the societies to opening Pandora's box so that he can destroy the world and then move on to the next one. Yeah, Pandora's box isn't Martian technology, but... <clears throat> Banjo can utilize it, which makes me think that Banjo is not a Martian, but he is a piece of Evolt. And that's why the Queen Vernage was like, you don't even know who you are, after saying, talking about Evolt. She didn't even, like, pause. She just goes from Evolt to talking about Banjo. Hmm. That's a it's... good point. 
Yeah. That is my theory. I, I wouldn't... Yeah, now, now, now that you mention it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that were true. Um, or if just, they're just so, a similar species. And if that's true, then... If, like, my theory's true, then, like, I'm all about Banjo being an alien. I got no problem with that. But if he's just a Martian who somehow can control Pandora's box, I'm gonna be pissed. But, but thinking about it, I don't know why a Martian would have the ability to control Pandora's box, because... They all, like, the Martians all died because Pandora's box was opened, and, you know, if if one Martian were unaffected by the box and had the ability to, like, keep it from going off, then how would the planet have been destroyed if, like, yeah. any Martian had the ability to do that? Also, um, Vernage is a Martian, right? Yeah. Yeah, she, she has green eyes. Yeah, Band- he's got red yeah. eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, you can't have multiple eye colors in a species. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, but from a plot perspective, it wouldn't. No, I mean you can't have glowing eyes in different colors. It's the same reason you don't use the same name for a character, you know, twice in one show. Like you don't have two people with the same name because it'd just be confusing. God. Could you imagine how confusing that would be when watching like a, a show in a different language Fuck. as well? Yeah. Like, sometimes I have trouble keeping names straight for, like, minor characters in shows. Yeah. I couldn't imagine if, like, some of them had the same name. I have trouble remembering the names of the main characters, just because I got enough shit that I have to remember. (laughs) That's true. Uh, That's, that's like, my big theory. Uh, What do you guys think of Cross Magma? It's fucking sick! It's a cool suit. My only gripe is that there's too much orange... I could understand that. If they had... I, I actually really like the design. I wouldn't call it like my favorite or anything, but I do really like it. I definitely think that the original, like the base um, cross, <laughs> I think it's just cross. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm just calling it cross. Yeah, I think that the the base cross suit is still the best. I love that. Suit. Yeah, I really do love that suit too. It's so crispy. I like the base suit, but I love the special effects and, like, the, the special weapon for Cross Magma. You know, you got the knuckle, you got all the, the magma particle effects, you got the freaking eight-headed Orochi dragon. <laughs> you like the all the lava squelching all over the place? Yeah, man! <laughs> it actually does look really good. I was surprised. It looks when it like started, fucking I was movie like, special effects. Yeah. When it started, I was like, oh god, this is gonna look really bad. And it looked really good. I was shocked. Uh, I really like that suit. We don't know Liam's opinion, but it's usually bad. So I'll imagine that he does not like it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's a safe bet that Liam likes it. It's not edgy enough. There's no black on it. That's fine. I mean, Liam, <laughs> Liam is an no only edge. It. Um, what do you guys think of the revelation that uh, not only, not only is Banjo an alien, and he was being. Uh, picked apart by scientists in a laboratory, but the lead scientist in charge of studying him just happens to be Sento's dad. It's convenient. Convenience. <laughs> you know, I feel like, one less yeah, character I feel like that's to way, I feel like that's way too convenient. That's, that's like a little nitpick I have. That's way too convenient. You end up with, like, Star Wars syndrome, where everyone's yeah. related to it, everyone. It, it seems like the galaxy is smaller than it should be, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're uh, dealing with an entire, like, country full of people. With, like, and it's split into three separate countries. But everything to do with Pandora's box has thus far happened in Toto. And everyone who's involved with it is related to one another in some way now. Whether by, like, blood or by, like, a friend relationship or enemy relationship now. This this show is really good at making japan feel really small <laughs> it is i don't like they remember just walk to the wall and everything it's like oh there it is yeah. i mean they are right next to it <laughs> they live I'm... like right next to the wall so but when they're at like um uh the hokuto farm and everything you can't see the wall from there and hokuto they just like, walk is to it. like hokuto is so completely unimportant it's like farmland in the real world where nobody even fucking thinks of it 99% of the time. I yeah. think it's North North Japan, so yeah. That's 
if I remember right from the way it's split up in the intro, that northern Japan is Hokuto, and that's basically just farmland. It's which is a shame, considering uh, without farmland you don't eat. So yeah, I, I don't I don't know what their trade agreements are. Yeah, like where that's unimportant to the plot. I mean, it's unimportant, <laughs> but it's interesting to think about. Like where do the other regions get their food from? Yeah, the the thing is Hokuto is like barren now as well. They can't grow food well anymore. How do you control so, resources? How do you control energy, water? Yeah, I'll, like Brondo. Hokuto Hokuto was the farmland for all of Japan. And now it's barren, and there's walls between it and the rest of Japan. How the fuck is anybody eating? They're not giving the plants enough electrolytes. <laughs> Everybody's fucking eating uh, cup ramen now. That's how. They just grow soybeans in their house. That's fine. No one's getting my idiocracy reference. No, I got I'm it. I'm sorry. No I'm one's sorry. No. I missed it. I it got was, your electrolytes. I guess it just wasn't funny. So, <laughs> does anybody <laughs> does anybody uh, have anything they want to talk about with this episode? Um, I think we mentioned, you know, I don't know. I think we covered we just about everything. <laughs> Do you feel like Rogue does a lot of shit when he has the chip inside of him that uh, you think somebody would hit that button for, right? Yeah, we do learn that Stalk does have one of those hurt hurt buttons. He could have just the hurt button. He could have just hurt buttoned all over the place. Like especially when he learned that um, Gentoku blabbed to yeah. uh, to Banjo. I'm like, God, we, we learned it, kid. we learned Ooh. fairly soon that Stalk actually knows that he's turning traitor even and does nothing to stop it. Stalk is like one of those villains that's like, haha, everything's going according to my plan, even when it's not. It, so he gets fucked just over because of it. through his fingers because he's lazy, I guess. I don't know. Mm hmm. I mean, if he really had everything going according to his plan, it wouldn't be much of a show. That's true. <laughs> he would just win and the world would get obliterated. Or maybe all of these, like, incidents are inconsequential to his ultimate plan so it's like yeah it's fine if that goes south i got you know it's not really gonna matter as soon as i get the belt and that's still on board yeah i mean it's probably all just like inconsequential shit to him but that's usually what causes your downfall as a villain like this guy isn't worth my time and then he comes back with like a party of adventures and shoves swords up your ass until you die it makes sense when it's a short-sighted villain, but this guy has destroyed other planets, so... He's full of himself. He doesn't understand human ingenuity. He's tired. I don't think we're that special. We're the best. Haven't you seen any sci-fi? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and because of that, factor. I know we're not the best. <laughs> you we mean, wrote it. Humans, That's why we're the, the best. You humans, you humans, humans are spirit. always the jack-of-all-trades in, uh, in sci-fi series. It's just... Oh, they're they're kind of good at everything, but they're not great at yeah, anything. But they're also the ones that are at the center of every story and cause all the big changes in the universe. It's so. because you can relate to humans. Mm. Yeah, I can't relate to are, some weirdo. You are a human. I can't relate to some alien weirdo with like pointy ears. I don't know. I, I relate. <laughs> I related to the Spock alien in District human, Nine. So you can relate to that half. I can relate to half of him. Yeah. I found the aliens in District 9 to be relatable, even though they were just a bunch of fucking exoskeletal aliens. It's because they're sad and depressed it's, like you. This is what we call a joke. Max! Time, where we're, <laughs> what we're making, was that? <laughs> we're, we're making jokes about how you can't relate to an alien, Tomaz. We're not serious. We're not being... We're, not be, we're being facetious. I'm sorry, Tomaz. <laughs> anyway. Moving on. <laughs> We'll move on to episode 32. What do you say? Okay. Let's do it. Uh, after escaping Pandora Tower in a flying box last episode, uh, Sento and Banjo go to see the Prime Minister of Toto and just give Pandora's box to him because he's definitely not lost it like six times. And uh, they decide to use the power of the box as a deterrent for open war. Um, Kazumi 
Greece uh, gets a mysterious phone call from Utsumi. You remember that guy? Yep. The guy who doesn't have a side. Little little Hojo. Utsumi is like a Nanba child, I think. Because later on he yells out like anything for Nanba Industries. Yeah, he's a Nanba child. Yeah, mm. what a silly, ridiculous plot that we all just accepted Hail is Nanba. real. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a um, Nambla child. Oh, <laughs> doesn't he kind of look like he could be a little Hojo? A little. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a little bit. I don't know. Hopefully, he gets kneed in the crotch later on. <laughs> he does a lot of that, like enemy untransforms and then I kick them in the face thing. Yeah. He does a lot of that. Huey Emmerich. <laughs> when uh, Sento and Banjo arrive back at the pit, the cafe pit, uh, Sala shows Sento the data about Banjo being an outer space man, and she's like, shh, keep it to yourself. And he's like, yo, Banjo, this shit says you're an alien. <laughs> I got a real kick out of that. <laughs> Uh, that's like the only time in the show so far where it's like sensitive information here you go (laughs) I thought that was really funny like he just doesn't care he's like hey Banjo you're an alien I Uh, guess that's the best way to do it anyway yeah (laughs) Uh, back at Kazumi's stakeout of Pandora's box we learn that the phone call from Utsumi was an ultimatum Either he brings Pandora's box to them, or a bunch of the farming folk that he loves, who we've never met before, will be violently murdered. One of those, I like to note that one of those guys was from the, um, the Hyper Battle video that I posted pictures from. Oh shit, so we have met one of them before. Yeah. Hmm. That's cool. He, he's I the retract one that, my... He was the one that was speaking out, mostly. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I retract my, uh, shitty dickhead comment, then. Kazumi is very uh, torn about this because he knows he can't give up Pandora's box but all of his friends are going to die. He makes the only sensible protagonist decision I've seen in anything ever where he's just like, well, if I give them Pandora's box it'll obliterate the planet Earth so I should probably not, even though I love these people. He stays his ground honorably. Uh, Back at the pit, Banjo starts throwing a hissy fit about being a spaceman. And uh, Sento explains, you know, humans can't touch Pandora's box and control it. That's not a human thing. And, uh, you know, they talk a bit more about the information. You know, this says you're an alien. I'm not an alien. This says you are, motherfucker. And uh, Banjo's still not having it and fucks off in a huff. He leaves. And uh, Sento takes his dad being the one who studied him, like, really well. He's just like, wow, I can't believe my dad studied him. I don't even remember, like, Takami's father really coming up very much, other than it being the reason that he got into doing science. Yeah, he was just wanted to make him proud, and he worked at the lab. Mm-hmm. That's, that's pretty much all we knew about him. I just hope it doesn't turn into one of those things, like, oh, here's a... Uh... Here's dangerous zombie, and, you know, he's the villain here. And, oh, well, his father's in prison. And, you know, they, they go to visit him a couple times. Oh, well, now he's the villain. Mm. Well, his dad's uh, dead, I think, so probably not. That, or he got brain-faced. Or, like, brain-faced switched. I don't know where my brain is going. <laughs> Soichi is him. He yeah. face switched him. Solid <laughs> <laughs> uh, notes that Sora. it's... Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Face sweats to the max. Uh, Sala notes that it's weird that all the info was kept under such low security, and there's, like, this almost comical cut to Sento's face, and he goes, Stalk! And I'm like, of course it's him! He's behind everything! Just fucking assume it's him! You know it! Greece realizes that he can't risk the outright world uh, destruction of the world for a handful of peoples he knows. Thankfully, the farmers all agree wholeheartedly, which I thought was also refreshing. None of them are like, please don't kill me. They're all like, fucking kill us, idiot. He's not coming. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a nice little change of pace. Um, Utsumi orders them killed, but Rogue just punches everyone except the farmers and lets them all go. He cuts all the ropes off. 
And uh, Utsumi gets butt hurt about it and turns on the hurt switch. But and doesn't like, kill him for it. No, he's just like, you uh, You belong to us, remember that. Meanwhile, uh, Sento and Misora have yet another heart-to-heart talk while sappy music plays. Uh, Sawa reports that she found out that Stalk was involved in Banjo's memories going hazy. People at the lab remember meeting him around the same time that Banjo's parents died and his memory went hazy. And this is somehow a surprise. Uh... Perhaps Stalk killed his parents, even. Who knows? That makes sense to me. There's this meeting between uh, Nanba, who's still masquerading as Sato's prime minister, and the Toto PM. And Nanba just tells him he's a bitch boy, and he'd never use the Pandora's box, so they're just going to do whatever the fuck they want. Like, we're just going to invade you because you're not going to use it. He calls him a bitch right to his face, which I thought was a little rough <laughs> for a children's program. <laughs> like, you passive fuck, you ain't gonna do shit. <laughs> what are you gonna do, come over here and kill us? No. Well, then we're gonna come over there and kill you. Problem solved. He starts, See you. He starts like, grabbing his dick at him. It was really <laughs> awkward. <laughs> but, uh, Stalk and Nanba have a conversation, and Stalk's like, oh, we don't need Pandora's box. We need the ultimate driver. And Nanba's like, oh yeah, shit, that sounds good. And he doesn't even get the slightest hint that he's being played because he's fucking senile, I guess. He just no. He's like, oh, well that sounds even better than Pandora's box. Let's get it. I, I don't, know, don't know what you're talking about. Go ahead and do whatever you want. Yeah. I don't trust that guy, but I trust everything he says implicitly. <laughs> uh, Kazumi's Farmer friends all show up at the PM's office, and they have this tearful reunion together, which I kind of liked. And uh, but then Sato starts invading again. No countries have ever gone to war so rapidly, and war been over so fast, and started again. It's because everything's two miles away. I guess. I thought it was difficult to go through the wall. Uh, I think I didn't all those gaps open up. And Maybe there's still like red uh, energy. I don't know if that's like lethal though. Well, there was like a shot early on of a plane hitting it, wasn't there? Hmm. I thought it was just like red LEDs. It just looks cool. Yeah, it Which just looks cool. Awesome. I don't fucking care. <laughs> Some yeah, neon lights. Uh, Grease uh, goes out to fight invading Sato, and but he gets his shit rocked by the Gear Brothers because he's the tertiary rider. Uh, but Sento shows up. Banjo, being the secondary rider, goes off to angst by himself in a graveyard about his dead GF. Uh, it happens a lot to secondary riders, actually. <laughs> well, it's either that or you stare at your hands. Unlike most others in his position, though, he sets aside his angstings uh, when lives are being lost. He gets that little call where people are like, Please, they're invading! God, bullets, they hurt! <laughs> and he's like, I should probably do something. And leaves. <laughs> Uh, back at the big pointless fight, Sento defeats Engine Brothers first <laughs> because he never learns his fucking lesson. And the other guy becomes Heck Bros again and reveals it's all <laughs> been a ruse. <laughs> the Prime Minister's office is actually being attacked. And Grease stays and fights because he's a tertiary rider and Sento leaves to go save the PM. Uh, Stalk and Rogue attack the PM's office, but Banjo shows up to fight Stalk, who reveals he knows everything about Banjo's past to him. And not only that, but in his estimation, Banjo exists only to fight and is fated to destroy everything. Uh, He then kicks him down some really conveniently placed stairs. How convenient. We we get another scene where Banjo's laying on the ground and he's all sad. Uh, But Sento shows up and he's like, never mind, bitch, I'll take care of this for you. And uh, Banjo stands up and gives a really cool speech about being yourself. And he looks right into the camera. Yeah, that... that He tells all those kids out there. And uh, transforms into Cross Magma again, which is really... uh, Even sped up, that transformation sequence is super dope. I really love it. And then he proceeds to just punch the shit out of Stalk until he blows the fuck up and leaves. Which is awesome. Magic <laughs> teleport powers. That everyone and, uh, has. 
they just sit there talking for a second, and then Banjo's like, "Oh shit, Rogue's attacking! I forgot. <laughs> Whoops, that was important, and I forgot it." And Rogue just goes up to his his dad, and his his dad's the PM is like, "Yo, Pandora's box isn't even here anymore, idiot. I gave it to two teenage girls, so it's safe." And <laughs> unfortunately for the prime minister, Rogue is like, "I'm here for you, idiot." And then uh, they leave, and the heroes run through the door like, "Oh shit, they were supposed to be in here." What did you guys think of episode thirty two? <laughs> oh, it was all right. Yeah. It was okay. Um, I felt that the the plot line with the farmers was kind of... uh, It felt very two-arc structure to me. Like something that would be in a different Kamen Rider show. Um, Not that it was a bad thing. I just didn't really see the need for it to be there. Uh, I'm glad that there's like that. story stuff going on with uh, with Greece. Yeah, it's there so you don't forget about them. <laughs> but it still felt <laughs> it still felt like oh well, we need to give Greece something to do. That's probably 100 percent true. I guess it's honestly. there to show that um, uh, Gentoku is kind of turning traitor. He, yeah, he's getting soft. I, I mean, it serves soft. the point narratively. Like, it's the build-up to Rogue going 100% against the grain. Like, turning against his team. And if it didn't exist, like... I'm sort of of the opposite opinion of Tomas. Tomas kind of wished at episode 30 he would have just turned traitor instantly. Which is very exciting in a show like this. Like, you'd be like, oh god, what happened? And they could explain it afterwards. But I'm I'm more into the idea that it builds up to him turning traitor, and you get these little hints, and then this big ass hint, and then full on. I noticed that pun, you bitch. I really tried to avoid it. <laughs> what was the pun? I missed it. It, it builds up. Head. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm clever. Overall, with the rest of the episode. Um, because there was so much less going on with this episode than previous ones, it felt like only half an episode. And I'm like, oh, it's already over? Um, There's so many pointless fight scenes yeah, in this episode. The fights don't really matter yeah. at this point. Uh, the whole engine bros thing, yeah. Uh, I'm just getting coupled with Coupled with <laughs> the, the Bloodstock fight, where it's like, well, Bloodstock's not going to kill them. And... They've already established several times that he's not going to kill any of them, and he's simply using his strength as a way to essentially grow his own strength by, like, cultivating Bonjo, which we'll get to actually next episode, but... Um, and, and it also had the Be Yourself speech that we heard before. I just, think that's, like, the third just time. Just directed, directed towards, I guess, Banjo himself. Yeah, Banjo usually says that speech about Sento, but at least he said it about himself this time. Yeah. Um, there's there's a line in a previous episode that Stalk says where he says the trans steam system is just like uh, clothing to me. Uh, so like, I guess my question is, why does he let himself get the shit beat out of him all the time? Uh, is that necessary? He has to get the the death data. So he can go level X. Uh, I don't know. I guess he just is biding his time until he gets his super suit. I guess maybe it doesn't hurt him, right? Because it's like it's like flies hitting you or something. You can't you can't have a, uh, just like a guy getting punched by a common rider. You can't have that. He's got to fucking blow up. Yeah. I guess it makes sense gotta from... Gotta be in a suit uh, to get punched. It makes sense from a narrative standpoint, but in-universe it's really weird that he's just like, I'm gonna pretend like that hurt me. In-universe it is weird, but... For fun. And like Max said, it would be kind of weird if the, you know, the main characters were constantly beating the shit out of someone that was out of suit. An old man, yeah. <laughs> Plus, that would put a lot of that's, pressure on his on his actor. Yeah, that's not my that wasn't my point. Like, I don't want him to beat the shit of Soichi every episode. <laughs> my point was like, if he's really been this powerful this whole time, to the point where like you know, trans steam is pointless. 
But he's let himself get the shit beat out of him every time they've had a fight with him, for the most part. Is and then there was doing it for fun. There was that whole octopus light thing where, like, yeah. there was the deception. It's like, oh, you didn't know I had this combination, and so I was able to get one over on you. It's like, but he was in his base form using something that really wouldn't be that powerful against you, considering that he's fighting you with like, I guess, I guess you could like play it off like he's he's pretending to get the shit beat out of him to give them the confidence to continue training and getting more powerful. I guess that's a good cop out. Yeah, yeah, that's a good cop out. <laughs> Hire me, John Toei. I'll take care of all your plot holes. That's just that bothered me a little bit in this episode because I just thought back on how many times he's got the shit rocked out of him. But he's some like super evolved alien being. Oh, maybe he's just legitimately getting the shit kicked out of him. At this point, maybe because he needs the evolved driver or whatever. Yeah. It's this episode has a lot of pointless fighting in it, and a lot of like, uh, oh, I f- like we got to go to this fight. Now we got to go to this fight. It's like they're late, and they they gotta go catch up. And it's like, oh, we're we're late for this other fight. Bye. Oh, uh, actually, we we're we needed to leave like five minutes ago. Because I really like this show, and these episodes aren't bad. I would never say that. I just I have nitpicks, which is what you tune in for, right? Everybody, I guess so. <laughs> I, I just have nitpicks. We are critics. Over- this episode was like Tomas said, not a whole like only the only story moving parts that happen in this episode are like beginning and the end, mm-hmm. and everything in bese- between is just like a bridge. Yeah. And when you have 50 episodes, you gotta do shit like that sometimes. I guess you do have to have some sawdust thrown in there. Yep. Or some padding. Straight up McDonald's style. Yeah. Throw some sawdust <laughs> I was in gonna, there. I was gonna Put say in another Subway. piece of bread. <laughs> <laughs> Subway, eat dust. And rubber bread. Overall, the- like, I, I wouldn't say any of these episodes that are like this one are necessarily bad. No. Uh, they're just, they're less interesting. Uh, they're the ones that you probably are going to forget about because not much really happened in the grand scheme of things, which again is fine. Like, I love, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention Kuga again this, this, this month. Uh, I love Kuga, but there's like a solid 12, Kuga. there's another, <laughs> there's like a solid 12 or 15 episodes in the middle of Kuga where there's maybe like two episodes of something important happening. And then everything else is just a continuation of what you've already Yo. seen. Let's be fair. There's more than 12 or 15 episodes. <laughs> Dude, I fucking love Kuga, but I'll be the first to tell somebody you're going to have to strap in. You're going to get some monsters of the week for a while. Mm-hmm. Some of them are good. Some of them are, holy shit. Godai is, beating the ever-loving fuck out of this monster to the point that his hands are getting bloody and he's screaming in, like, rage and you're just like, who is this person? So it's even better. Yeah. <laughs> I love murder. Murder's great, yeah. <laughs> these, these episodes are, like, bridge episodes. They bridge from one plot point to another. And without them, an episode like a series might feel rushed, and you might end up having to pull out another villain towards the end of the show because you've run through the course of this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, not what? pointing any fingers here, but I think there would be so many fingers to point that you'd run out of fingers. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Build's been very good about at least making uh, bridge episodes entertaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my only real problem is the uh, heck bros. Like I am so fucking sick of them. I know yeah. it's only happened four times. Get them right? out of there! But it's four times of the same exact fight happening, like almost back to back. Tired of it. They yeah, like they've essentially turned rides. into the they've turned into the mooks. They need to be killed. No one cares about them. <laughs> If there's nobody in the audience that's like, oh, I feel bad for them because they were named by children. Like, no, I don't. Can kill them. S- Someone cares. has to get beat up. Put some smashes in there. It, they have just as much personality as a clone smash. They barely fucking say anything and get their ass beat. Yeah. 
Like, if they had something to them, like, a really good thing to do with these type of characters is to actually give them a brotherly bond. Have them, like, legitimately care about one another uh, in a real way. In a way that the audience is like, oh, so they're, like, really human characters because they're, like, they're brothers and they love one another. And they want to protect one another and that's why they do the things they do. Or instead... The one guy gets his shit rocked, and the other guy just takes his power. It, or make us care about them, yeah. Just just maybe show their shitty life in Namba land. I don't want to see anything that happened at Nambla. <sighs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, like, Max. I, I don't even really like <laughs> their suit see how designs. how oppressive it is in, in like the, to be a Namba child. And... Yeah, yeah. We don't. We didn't really see that with Sala, right? She just turned traitor, yeah, and that's, that's turned it. traitor to our guys, and then turned traitor to them. And we're supposed to just be like, "Well, that's fine. She's on our side now." Overall, everything about the two of them is just very stale. Like their their suits were interesting for like five seconds, and now they just they look like the kind of suits that you could throw on any. They, they look like the Kurokage suits from Gaim at this point. Yeah. They're, they're not even, completely pointless characters. They e- don't have personality. Yeah, they're not even one, one dimensional. They're like no dimensional. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're they're an obstacle, and like the writers are treating them like an obstacle, where they just show up in the way of our heroes to stop them from getting to the real villains. They're goombas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I said, they goombas just, they sometimes just have personality. They're just walking the at them. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> legit, like literally in the beach episode, he was walking at him and he shot him with his gun. Yep. Sometimes Goombas in RPGs at least have personalities, so they got that on the fucking heck, bros. Just put a plant a flag in one of the Goombas' heads. Give it a give it a voice. <laughs> plant a flag in one of the heck bros' heads and give it a personality. Yep. Uh, are we done talking about episode thirty-two, folks? Yeah, I'm so. surprised we mentioned as much as we did. I didn't really have much to say about this episode. Uh, let's move on to episode 33. After losing the leader of a sovereign nation last episode, our heroes just go home. As you do. <laughs> They're just like, fuck it, I'm going home. Uh, Stalk then ca- calls up his best friend Sento on the phone. And uh, I f- am I the only one that finds it weird that the villain just has the main character's phone number and he calls him up like, yo, man, what's up? <laughs> it's it's kind of silly. See how you doing? Did you, you get my package? package? <laughs> Did you get that thing I sent you? <laughs> uh, he'll return the PM if Sento will build him a new driver, or get him a new driver, the Evol driver. He tells him that he had to find it, that he, that he hid it before... Um... Before he lost his memories. And so... Yeah. It, it turns out the build driver is actually based on a driver that Sento's dad made. And it, this this driver's like one of a kind. The evil driver. And the, he hit the it before he driver? lost his memory. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's just weird how those words sound so similar. It's subtle. Hmm. Common writer evil. I heard it more as like an... An evolution. evolution? It's evolution. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. It's Evol, really. It's Evol, driver. Uh, but he gives him 24 hours to deliver it or else the PM dies. Uh, they try to search the world's largest flash drive that they've had all this time for keyword Evol, driver, but it tells them in big flashing red letters that nobody knows. Which I thought was funny until it turns out to be a password that they need. <laughs> Yeah, for another flash drive that they have. Yeah, they pop in Banjo's flash drive because Sento's got a hunch, right? His dad worked with on Banjo, so maybe he just dumped all of his Evil driver shit into that. And it turns out he's 100% right. Uh, How so convenient. that plot points. So that plot points fixed. They found the information they need. Uh, we cut to a jail cell. Like in a prison. Where they're keeping the PM... And he gives a nice speech about leadership, which, like, super pisses off Utsumi. Like, he gets really mad about it. (laughs) And he's like, yo, Gintoku, I know you're the PM's only fucking son, but we're just gonna kill him anyway when we get the belt. Fuck it. I hate that guy. And Gintoku looks back like, I don't know, he is my dad. Meanwhile, back at the pit... Uh, we learned that Evil Driver was built to gain access to Evolt's ultimate form. 
Uh, Evolt destroyed Mars, so it's not a great belt for our heroes. Uh, but we get 100% confirmation that Stalk is Evolt, the destroyer of Mars. And he took over Soichi's body on his mission to Mars. Like, all of this is in Banjo's fucking jump drive. Yep. Uh, did, did, like, Shinobu not know that you're not supposed to keep all of your fucking information in one place? On one flash drive? With one oh, password? Shit, his, and his then social you... security number is on here, too. Alright. <laughs> oh, and here's the password to his luggage. Yeah. Uh, is it nobody knows? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also learned that Katsuragi Shinobu worked with Stalk on repairing the Evil Driver that was apparently damaged on Mars. They just say that. They're like, it was damaged on Mars. And it can tap into the full power of Pandora's box. So it's, it's not a good belt. Nobody's excited about it. A bad belt. Uh, back at jail... Gentoku releases the PM and, and decides to escape with him. And the PM's like, but why? And he's like, because I love you, daddy. He made it real, <laughs> like, he was gonna shoot him in the head, and then he just shoots the lock. I just wanted to scare you really badly, because you're a really bad dad. I was gonna suspend disbelief for the audience for just a couple he's, more moments before doing the obvious. <laughs> he's, a re- he's a real hot old man dad. He's, like, ripped. Have you ever seen him yeah. underneath his fucking jacket? He's got some sick tats, too. Yeah, he's straight up Yakuza. He's got fucking Yakuza tats all over him. Um, so they, they escape, right? But Utsumi shows up with a smash, and he smashes that hurt button, which fucks over Gentoku completely. He untrans- He's, like, on the ground writhing. But the PM uses some of those dope-ass Yakuza muscles he's hiding... And he tackles Utsumi into a wall and makes him drop the remote. And Gotoku just picks it up and throws it. He's like, Man, man <laughs> I, could, I could bully around Utsumi. That guy's super spindly. <laughs> yeah. But the PM's supposed to be, like, old and fragile, but he's not. So he just fucking rams into him. How is Utsumi even alive at this point? Like, did they, did they ever discuss why it is that he was shot and then he survived? Nope. He's probably a clone or something. Fuck it. <clears throat> I don't know. He only got shot in the arm. And he fell off like a ten foot high bridge. I'm sure he's fine after that. Um, He fell into ankle deep water. He's (laughs) alright. Gentoku transforms into Rogue and obliterates the smash. And Utsumi starts to run, but uh, Gentoku's hurt button gets pressed. A camera moves over and stalks there and he's like, hey, idiot. I know that you you turned rogue against us. That's why I called you that. You fucking moron. Do you not get it? He says uh, because of being turned into Common Rider Rogue, uh, all of the evil Pandora box energy that turns you into a fuck face is dissipated. Uh, so now he's a good good boy again, and uh, they leave him there, which I thought was really weird. Like they take the PM back inside, but they just leave uh, Rogue on the ground. I could kill you, but I'll do it later. Again, it, like they don't even like take him back inside and put him in the jail. He does. They just um, like leave him. He does have Utsumi's little hurt button now, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he keeps it. Yeah, and then he calls Sento. You'll, uh, you'll yeah. fix my hurt button. Yeah, uh, back at the pit, it turns out Sento built his bottle making machine out of the Evol driver, which is super convenient. <laughs> it's just right there in the fridge. Yeah, and he gets to work putting the components back together in the driver. That's the end of that plot. He found it. This felt like such a a stupid thing to even make a plot device, because why would you set up a plot element and then resolve the plot element in the same scene? (laughs) Well, where would he find it otherwise? Would he just find it buried in the backyard, like? Yeah, maybe he'd have to go back to his mother's place, right? And, like, maybe he hit it with his mother. Mm. I mean, they they really could have come up with just about anything else, considering the fact that you were just saying last episode, like, well, you got to throw in some sawdust episodes because you're going to run out of material. But this is an area where, you know, you could have them legitimately spending an entire episode, like, figuring this shit out. And then there you go, you have another episode and you don't have to spend an episode just bridging the gap between, you know, the storylines. They, you gotta put something in the program. They don't you wanna, gotta put something. They don't want to pay um, the actress to come back to be Sento's mom. Even though it would be really cool to see him go back yeah. to his mom and be like, yeah, it's me. 
Like he knows it's, it's, it's his mom now. Seeing how he reacts to that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. it would be. I was I was kind of hoping that would eventually happen. Your mom but makes instead me some of that, sugary eggs. Yeah, but instead of that, he finds the Evol driver in the back of his refrigerator. And for some reason, it's cut in half. But like, there's no mechanical parts that you can see it's in the just, half. It's a hunk of red plastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sala, being somewhat sane, even after her horrible childhood as a Nanba child, uh, mentions that it would be really stupid to hand the driver over to Stalk, but everybody in the room's like, Oh, Sala, you fucking idiot. We have to save the PM. We have to save one guy, stupid. And here's that thing that you mentioned before about the characters doing something they previously said they weren't going to do. Yeah. And then acting like it would be completely stupid to do the opposite. And uh, Sento gets a phone call, and we don't know who called him just yet. Uh, In the abandoned warehouse on the edge of town, our heroes go to hand off the belt in exchange for the PM, but Rogue shows up and fucks up the transfer. It seems like he's there of his own accord, right? But Stalk tries to press the hurt button, and Gentoku's like, Ha ha, fuck you, idiot. I'm working with these guys now. And Sento's like, yeah, I changed the frequency of the button. So now it don't hurt no more. Did he have to do surgery to do that? I uh, I think <laughs> I think what he was saying he did is he used the frequency that is transmitted by the receiver or by the by the remote that goes to the receiver in the chip to somehow reprogram the chip inside so that the Remote has to emit a different frequency in order to communicate with it. We just did yeah. It remotely, yeah. It just don't that's work anymore. No it it doesn't okay. matter. It doesn't work anymore. He's a good guy. Yeah. yeah. He's back to and being my favorite character. He they rolled, get, he they rolled give, a twenty on his technology check. <laughs> <laughs> they give the PM the Evol driver, and they're like, "All right, run." Run, weakest guy in the room. And then he runs like an old man out of there. <laughs> and, like, just a wall of smashes show up. And, uh, they're like, no, you can't fucking go. But then Grease shows up and Remember he punches Grease? the smashes. He's there. Shit's getting, shit's getting crazy. Grease is here now. My greasy boy. <laughs> that dude never does anything anymore. And they're like, oh shit, Grease, you're here too? Let's fucking transform and beat everybody up. And then there's a big fucking fight. And everybody's fighting everybody. Heck bros are there again, probably. I don't Actually, care. I don't remember. <laughs> they're so forgettable. I don't remember if they're yeah. there or not. The PM tries to escape again, but Stalk teleports up to stop him like he turns into a big teleporty snake this time. He doesn't <laughs> use the trans steam. Utsumi pops out of some barrels. He's like, hey, hey, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's in a second. Gentoku jumps up, right? <laughs> And Misora is like trying. She's running with the Evil Driver, and uh, her pops jumps up in front of her, stalk, and he's like, "Hey, baby, give me that." And she's like, "Oh no, it's my dad." What he don't want me no more. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, Gentoku intervenes though as Rogue, and uh, he starts fighting Stalk. And Stalk gets his shit wrecked, like, completely this time. He turns back into Soichi. And here, everyone, is where Misora becomes a complete fucking idiot for one scene. And starts running towards him, whispering Oto-san and shit. Ugh! Copy! And Utsumi hops out from some barrels and says, Gotcha, bitch! And he takes the Evil Driver (laughs) and he gives it to Soichi. And uh, Misora doesn't even feel bad. She's like, "That wasn't my fault. That was Utsumi's." <laughs> she and she like <laughs> ran towards him like with the thing that he was there for. Yeah, give it to Sawa. Hand it to Sawa. <laughs> or even yet, uh, just just leave. Like, don't go check on. It. Fuck it. Uh, Soichi uses the Cobra bottle he's always had with something called a Rider System bottle. And he transform. He uses his great new belt that he got at the Gap to power up into Common Rider Evil. <laughs> the Gap. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting to note that his belt plays Ode to Joy. You remember Chairman mm-hmm. Nanba played that shit yeah. a little while ago. Mm-hmm. It's my uh, it's I'm my sure- favorite Mars composition. 
<laughs> it's, you haven't heard it until you've heard it in the original Klingon. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Evel is so powerful that Rogue can't even land a hit on him. Like, Evel styles all over Rogue until he blows the fuck up. And he goes in for that final blow, but the PM, PM leaps out of left field and takes the hit. And uh, the scene goes dead quiet, which I thought was awesome. No music, hardly any sound effects. And Gentoku holds his father in his arms as he dies and calls him an idiot. Oh, yeah, <laughs> What did you guys think of episode 33? Um, it was cool. It had some dumb moments with, like, just characters being dumb. But otherwise, it was... I liked it. I thought this was the best. Yeah. Out of the pack. Yeah, out of these four, I, I like this one the most. What are your thoughts on it? Um... Well, to, to touch back on something that I was talking about earlier that only comes up in this episode, um, the reason that Bonjo is being uh, essentially trained to uh, develop his alien powers, whether they be Martian or not, uh, is because the only person that can use an Evil driver is someone that has a hazard level of five or higher. And how the fuck do you know this? This is information that's on the screen for a short oh. amount of time. Uh, is it in English? It's in English, and so you can pause the video and I you need can to start read it. reading screens. I always pause and read screens because I feel like sometimes it's interesting. And this this had a fucking info dump just on the screen for like five seconds. There's shit like um, only only Martians or like certain aliens can have hazard levels of higher than four. And in order to use the Evil Driver, you have to have a hazard level of five or higher. Um, stuff that talks about like the the details of the belt and like what it can do, and like the the details of the designs of the belt and the suit. Um, Little Hiroshi better have TiVo to read all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Get so, out your magnifying glass, kids. So it turns out that Bonjo is being trained to become stronger because, well, Evol's going to take over Bonjo, and then Bonjo's going to be Evol and won't have Cross anymore. I don't want that to happen. It's definitely going to happen, but I don't want it to. I'm sure Liam would. Like He, he loves it when a, a character... Well, no, he probably won't, because he likes it when a character goes evil of their own accord. He doesn't like it when they're forced by outside forces. And yeah, that, this will yeah. this will just end up becoming um, Evol taking over uh, Bonjo's body and using him to become the ultimate power of the ultimate being in the universe. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, his goal is like really nebulous. Like He wants to blow up planets. I mean, I don't know why. But he does. Maybe he'll tell us eventually. I'm sure it's not as interesting as uh, the reason for Age of Ultron. Or wait, no. What, any, no, Infinity anything. War. Infinity I haven't War. seen Infinity War, so I don't know. I was going to say anything's probably better than... Uh, yeah, Age of Ultron sucked dick. Oh, I didn't see so. it. I just got confused. Yeah, it, it was really it was bad. was 100% for the kitties. Except people died. Yeah, like, a lot of human beings died in that movie, but whatever. It's for the kids. Yeah. Uh, there's tons of human beings dying in this show, but it happens off screen, and we don't know them, so it don't matter. That's true. That is the way fiction works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just faceless humans. I, what do you guys think of Common Rider Evol? We, we get a pretty decent look at him in this episode. There's a lot going on on that suit. There's a lot going on, but I think it's cool. I think it's cool um, as fuck. I think it's it, way better as, than a lot of the other like villain rider suits. Yeah, at least it's not like gold drive. It's not just a repaint yeah. of um, like build I think or it's, something. I think it's interesting looking. I'm, it's like got red and blue on it in places, which is like the build driver was a knockoff of the Evol driver, so of course it's going to have split red and blue color scheme on it as well, mm -hmm. which I thought was a great touch. Kind of looks uh, star mappy. Yeah, it's a little um, busy for me. It's a little busy. So it's really like busy. Star mappy stuff is like a hint that uh, maybe Evol Evolt or whatever is is a galactic traveler. Just going around destroying shit. I He's a spaceman. I saw some information that I unfortunately do not have the source for in front of me. 
but the star map on his suit is actually something that gives him directions to the location for like Pandora's box or whatever whatever power source or whatever planet is next on the the list for destruction or whatever. Um I this, don't this know how that works. Scans. I don't know how this works as far as um like I don't know why the suit would necessarily know that or if like Evol is the agent of destruction or is if he is simply following some other agent of destruction, probably a bunch of information that we'll just never get. Um, but as far as the suit goes, it is super fucking busy, but I think it looks really yeah. cool. I don't think it's it looks no, bad. It's, it's no dangerous zombie, but yes. no, nothing is dangerous. <laughs> no, nothing is as dangerous as that. Um, <laughs> but it's better than like Cronus or yeah. Gord Drive. Uh, I'd have to get, like, a better look. Because, I mean, I watched the episode, like, a few hours ago to do the recap or whatever, and I was too busy writing to pay too close attention. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'd have to give it another look. But I, I do feel like maybe it was a little too busy for me. The the finisher's cool. I like that it has a little, uh, like, agito kind of thing where it makes a oh, little yeah. pattern on the floor. I thought that was awesome. And it says, ciao. How, like... <laughs> Which Why is... does it say chow? Why does it have any French? That's what, um, because that's what, uh, Soichi says. I understand. Why does it I have understand Japanese that... in it? Yeah. Why does it uh, say Japanese? He's, yeah. he's from space. Yeah. Oh, maybe that says something about the Japanese and the French. They're, They're all from space. space. Maybe, the, maybe the it has theory. a connection to Kung Pao, the French it's aliens. It's the zoo theory, it's confirmed. It's the zoo theory. Um... Fuck. Pandora's box oh. is just putting up the cage. I really thought I'd get a reaction out of you guys about my French aliens reference. What is that? A Hitchhiker's <laughs> Guide to the Galaxy thing? No, no. it's a Kung Pao. Oh. Enter the fist. Well. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. I feel like I've seen that movie and heard it referenced too much. Like I laugh watching it, but I can't laugh at references to it anymore. I've heard it too much. Yeah, I can see that. Um, Not even. What do you guys think of the PM dying? How early did you see the PM was going to die? I, I didn't see it at all. Uh, it's because I'm blind, I guess. I didn't really see that coming either. It's As soon as he untransformed and hit the ground, I was like, the PM's going to die. He's going to jump out and stop that blast. And he did, and I was still like, fuck, dude, your son's a piece of shit. Don't do that. I, love I get Mr. it, though, Crocodile. right? I mean, from an outsider's <laughs> like perspective, though. yeah, his son's a piece of shit. But he's becoming less of a piece of shit because of the and whole... He, was, he wasn't a piece of shit before, either. Mm -hmm. And it's the it's the fatherly love. It's, you know, he's, yeah, he's gonna I love mean, his like son his... regardless. It's... Like, earlier in the show, you had a character who all of his friends and family were about to be killed, but he realized that if he gave Pandora's box over... This is just some guy, he's a farmer. All of his friends and family were going to get killed, and if he turns Pandora's box over, the world will be obliterated. And that's going to cause so many more problems for everyone else on Earth, because, you know, they're not going to exist anymore. And yeah, that's, the that's Prime Minister of Japan... The Prime Minister of Toto not Japan, who is in charge of the governing of the entire, the entirety of the sovereign nation of Toto, and which has been attacked uh, innumerable times by other nations, uh, that was taken over by a hostile power while he was in the hospital, sacrifices himself, uh, thus plunging the entire country into turmoil. But it was for his son. I can't really fault him that much for it. But it's going to suck for everybody else. Who's the PM now? I guess it has the to be Gentoku? Maybe. It's the guy in the background who keeps uh, going, But Prime Minister! Yeah, <laughs> the guy who's answering phones? Yeah, that guy. He's the Prime Minister the, now. The intern is now the Prime Minister. In, Nobody in, wants that job now, right? I guess not. Do there they need to like hold an the, election? There's a guy in the Rogue special that uh, looked like Japanese Daniel Radcliffe. 
And he was supposed to be the new prime minister, but he but he got offed. Okay, so he's dead. He can't come back and be the new <laughs> prime minister. Yeah. But there's like no one leading the country now. What's gonna happen? That's a that's like a really good cliffhanger to leave us on. Maybe Bloodstar Or is that even gonna come up? Maybe Bloodstark is gonna yeah, face Toto, change himself. Toto will just dissolve, who knows? Maybe Bloodstark will face change himself into the prime minister and then act like he's Maybe. the prime minister i, I like I, your idea isn't bad i would i'm not max's level of groaning over it or <laughs> I'm um, tired of the face changing like i'm i'm fine with that because it would make our heroes like renegades right they have to stay off the radar while still trying to fight what is essentially like the prime minister at that point like everyone's going to believe that's him and the riders have gone rogue um I like Max's idea a little bit more that the country just completely evaporates and they turn into like they have to like survive now. Yeah, On to- like, there's no cafe to stay in anymore. They're like the underground resistance. Yeah, I think that's super cool. I think uh, Tomaz's is more likely. I feel like the most likely one is that they just stop talking about the politics of it anymore, and it's all like we've got to stop stalk. Yeah, this might be the turning point of uh, caring about the countries and caring more about the ultimate goal. They can't Which do. I'm a, not. They can't do a vote at. of no confidence for the Sato Prime Minister. <laughs> he, uh, do you think that like there has to be people who work with a prime minister in Japan, right? How the fuck do you explain that? Like this guy comes in, he leaves one day, and he's like, "Oh, I've got this plan to take over." this other country we're gonna do it in this like one-on-one battle so we don't spill the blood of our people and they're all like yeah that's great we're 100 behind you and then he comes back the next day and he's like fucking invade him anyway i have a different voice now <laughs> i guess at that point they're just like oh well, i guess we can't do anything about that vote of no confidence yeah. i i think it would be interesting if um Bloodstark became the prime minister and there was like an internal conflict. But I really think, honestly, it's just going to be Gentoku because previously in the show he became the prime minister when his dad was absent. Yeah, but he was the prime minister's aide at that point. Now he's like a fucking terrorist. Or or Evolt <laughs> will just put a tie on his, uh, on his suit and just be like, I'm the prime minister now. <laughs> <laughs> he's just wearing that gray jacket. Over his shoulders. Yep. I'm the prime minister now. <laughs> There's a lot of places the show can go from here. I feel like this is a great like turning point. Hopefully things don't just stay the same for the most part next episode. But there's already been like one big turning point in the show. So I don't, I don't think that they could just not do another one. Yeah. I, there's still time. I mean, we're in like... The 30s, the early 30s, there's still a lot yeah. to go. We've got all the way to 50, so I would I would place my bets on a big change-up in the next few episodes. Yeah, who knows, maybe there's an even bigger shock twist. Maybe they all just, go to Mars. I just don't want there to be another villain, right? I don't want Stalk to be like, I'm... If I'm not really Evolt, it turns out that this guy is... Evolt it's was working for this. Of, it's the whole planet It's Utsumi. Oh, shut up. Uh, <laughs> I would, Wouldn't that be fucked up if he was the actual real I'd be end pissed. villain? I'd, I'd legit be pissed, because he's such a little piece of shit. He it, doesn't matter. Like, he's like Janosch from fucking Ghostbusters 2. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> he is... He is, uh, he is evil. He is Vigo, he the is destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that's, that's sort of the rolling the dice on the, on the show, right? Like, us as viewers, we have no say in what the fuck happens, but we have all these cool ideas. I just try not to get too attached to any of them, because none of them are really going to happen. Unless they do. That's true. We can literally yeah. throw spaghetti at the wall and it could happen. If if one of those pieces of spaghetti stick that we throw against the wall, we are going to lord it all over you audience forever. Yeah. We called it! We're calling it episode 34. There's literally going to be spaghetti on the wall. <laughs> they have to fight a spaghetti smash. 
<laughs> the spaghetti bottle. Spaghetti like... bottle. <laughs> His name is the Big Ragu, and they gotta fight him. There's your episode title. <laughs> the Big Ragu. <laughs> um, uh, do you think we're done talking about this episode, guys? Yeah. yeah. Do you feel so. we got all of our theories of what might happen in the future out, or do you have any more? I think we could. Yeah, I... We, we could We could literally come up with anything. We could, we could keep, keep speculating, but... They could go back in time and, and fuck with that shit on Mars. Who knows? Yeah, but we're recording this on the 4th of May, and so the next episode will be out in a couple days, so we'll just find out How some more. How dare time. you date this? I'm dating it! It's not like the episodes we're reviewing will date it or anything. No, not at all. <laughs> now they're going to know hey. how long it takes to edit. You better hurry up, Liam. <laughs> uh, there's like a big blank spot. He's going to have to edit out to uh, Yeah. Fuck you, Liam. You should make sure to tell him about that. <laughs> um, it says it in this information. It, like, it says it in this recording. So he should get it. Um, why don't we read some emails? What do you guys think of that? Sure. I like it. Uh, we have our first email from Swirly Jiffy. Oh, hello. Who says, who says, hey, RCR crew. I haven't sent an email in for a while, but finally got around to doing so now. I've been listening every month, though. Here are my questions. The first one's a bit long. One, do you all prefer power scale and rider, like in X8 and build, where there's a numerical system to show where people stack up? Or a more traditional system of tougher powers appearing as a response to either the heroes or villains gaining power. I think he means tougher forms. Okay. Do you guys want like do you guys like a numerical system uh, like a power level, or I, do you like they're just being new forms? I I don't like numbers being associated with it, but um, something about the X eight one was kind of cool. Just like I mean, the, like the early um. Yeah, like level or, one, yeah, two, three. Level one and two yeah. and three. But when it got up to like level ninety nine, it was like, eh. they just skip them. Like they it, could have yeah. done a whole thing where it's like level one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They go from ten to fifty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And level I don't X like that. And... I don't really like that. I'm not the biggest fan of there being just a form every time a character needs to get stronger, though. I'm not really. I get f- that it's. I get that it's visually a great representation, for like kids and for the audience in general. Like, oh, he's stronger because he has a new form. Well, but I miss the base suit automatically as soon as it disappears. What about you just put some gold trim on it? <laughs> like Kuga. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. Just like a little visual hint that it's stronger, and not like a whole overhaul. Well, yeah, you get the gold trim, but you also get like a bigger weapon, like uh, bigger, bigger dick. Yeah, because you know <laughs> when you get stronger, you get a bigger dick. Yeah. Uh, no, like the the gold trim, but also uh, Kuga's. Uh, I forget the names of his forms. The purple one that has the sword. Titan. 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 Uh, yeah. Where Titan can have two swords out at once. Yeah, Teton. Teton form. The Grand Tetons. Have you guys ever watched Stronger? No, no I haven't. In Kamen Rider Stronger, his name is not Titan, it's Teton. <laughs> they all pronounce it Teton. Teton. <laughs> is that like Meat Hand? It's hard, to, it's hard to take him super seriously when he's like all villainous and stuff and they call him Teton. Teton. It sounds Go ahead, very Tomas, funny. I'm sorry. Um, I don't he really like either swords, of the though. systems, to be honest. Like the, oh, well, he's stronger because he has a new form, or he's stronger because we have this arbitrary number that says he's stronger. So um, you would prefer it if they were just stronger just because they like trained or something? Well, if they yeah. trained, or if it was like a That'd character, cool. if it was like character growth. Uh, if it's not necessarily like the villains become stronger and then they just have to, you know work harder as a result yeah, I think instead of the, good. the abstract power level that you know you either have to describe to the audience or you have to come up with new some some new form that you sell as a toy yeah that, that's the thing is like i would prefer if they just like trained and like got better and like they kept the base suit or yeah. the base suit got 
just like a little bit added to it, like the gold trim. That's what but, the Showa riders did. Yeah, but the thing is, we, we're sadly at a point where if there's less forms, then there's less toys, and you know, Bandai oh, yeah. doesn't want that. Yeah. You just have to accept it as a fan, right? Like, whether you mm-hmm. like it or not, there's going to be new forms and stuff. I actually don't mind the hazard level thing in build because it's not out of control. Like, nobody ever went from hazard level 2 to hazard level 20. That's mm-hmm. true. It's all in steps. One, it's, like, it's not even in steps. Like, they started out and like, oh, you're, you've gotten more powerful. You're hazard level 1.5 now. Or you're, and oh man, you got even stronger suddenly. You're hazard level 1.7. Like, it is it was, small increments. It was all in little steps, which I was fine with. And like, like Tamaz said earlier, apparently like only crazy space aliens can have a hazard level of 5. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. Like When you get into Dragon Ball Z territory, where like characters are like, Oh yeah, well my power level is 100,000. Yeah, well, mine's a million. Well, fuck you, mine's a billion. That's, yeah, and then like, you're questioning, first... like, is this exponential? Is this linear? <laughs> like, what do these numbers even mean? How do you even judge? It's like, it doesn't fucking matter at that point. They're just numbers. Yeah, yeah. It, it takes a backseat to the characters and, like, the action at that mm-hmm. point, which I, I don't mind that much. It, it like, uh, pisses some people off really bad when they get, like, super exponential with it, but... I feel like Build did a pretty good job with hazard levels. They could have stood to maybe mention them a little bit more. Yeah, Build is doing a good job of it. Um, I'm glad that they don't get into such excruciating detail like they do like on the Common Rider wiki, where it's like, oh yeah, well this form can lift this many tons, and then when he transforms <laughs> to this form, he can lift this many tons. And it's like, where <laughs> do you get this data? Why does it matter? All that arbitrary fucking back of box information shit. Yeah. 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 Where you look on the back of the box of a transformer and it has like its energy and its power and speed. With, <laughs> but there's that one the that like everyone's <laughs> card. There's that one that everyone likes to point out that uh, Ultimate Kuga is actually significantly weaker than Common Rider Poppy. Oh uh, my it was, god! Uh, it was a uh, what was it? What's the final? Kiwami arms or something like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kiwami, who's god incarnate, is weaker than Kamen Rider Poppy or something. Yeah. That's absurd. Yeah, those systems don't matter, is the thing. <laughs> um, It's all arbitrary. It's all just a means to an end, I guess. Really, all I care about in Kamen Rider is that the action scenes are competently shot and interesting, the characters are engaging, and the plot line doesn't get too ridiculous. I think that about yep. covers it. Yeah. Okay. Aptly uh, qu- said. Question. Uh, thank you, sir. Oh, let's suck each other's dick for a while. <laughs> um, and uh, question two: In your opinion, do you think Kiriko becoming Chaser Mock could have helped redeem how the narrative and drive misused her? Um. Well, she's a woman in Common Rider, so no. <laughs> <laughs> If John Toei on the show, everybody. <laughs> I'm here. How's it going? <laughs> uh, Fuck women. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she, I don't know. Give her smoke bullets. If, if let her, if she did something more, it would be cool. But if they gave her like, you know, a writer form, I, I don't. If they gave, I, wanna, me, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to get into any spoilers about what happens with any characters, but if she would have become a certain character, like become a certain, like used a certain writer system after a certain character did, then I would have found that very poignant. Yeah, mm. There you go. You you said my words. Thank that you. would have worked out really well for me, but they did not do that because she has a vagina. Yep. Like that scene in in Drive where she puts on the Drive driver and it's like vagina detected and then it ejects. Itself. <laughs> <laughs> and they also went to the trouble of giving her those kick ass shoes and they showed them off for like one episode and then they just forgot that she even had them. She stopped even trying to fight monsters after like five or six episodes after she got those boots. It was really weird. Mm-hmm. They even had like those civilian rider gear things. And, yeah, they um, gave it to the chief instead. Which yeah. was hilarious. They could have given it to Kiriko. 
Mm. They she, she would rather stand beside a battlefield and look worried, I think. Get, right? Get thumbs right, up guys? In slow motion. Yeah. They didn't really I, handle her character well. Hide behind the Triderat. I'll handle this. Go inside and take care of her. Oh, I don't want to go to spoilers. Yeah, let's not get into any of that. Um, and finally, question three. With doctors and scientists being writers, what other job or profession would you like to see as a motif in a future writer series? I personally would be interested in a lawyer-themed series similar to the alternate world Ryuki world <laughs> in Decade. I feel um, like that one gets mentioned a lot. I know oh, Liam yeah. has brought it up in the past. Well, police officer's been done. I would go for, sp- like, athletes. I'm surprised oh, yeah. how untouched sports are. You want a football writer? Yeah. Common writer. Like, uh, common, common writer, writer touchdown. Gridiron. gridiron. There you go. Like, if, if there a baseball could be... Writer, that'd be the main the, writer. Yeah. In, a, in Japanese series, for sure, he'd be the main guy. Baseball guy. Mm-hmm. There'd be, like, a, a cocky, arrogant dickhead who spent the summer in America <laughs> as the American football writer. Secondary mm-hmm. writer would probably be some... Pretty boy, fuck boy, tennis writer. Uh, he'd have to be soccer, right? Or, or swimmer, yeah. Or swimmer. Yeah. That they'd probably cash in on free, right? And make him yeah. a swimmer for sure. Well, either a swimmer or an ice skater. As much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. I feel like that's a really untapped idea for a series. Like sports themed writers would be fun as hell. mm Hmm. And it just seems really obvious, too. Like, I don't really watch much sports or care about many sports, but I still think it would be fun. Yeah. I think everybody would be on board for it, because I came up with it, and I'm the best. Uh, What about you guys? (laughs) Carpenter? Carpenter? (laughs) Carpenter? Common Rider Jesus? (laughs) Jesus? <laughs> Common Rider Jesus? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's um, Dude, having like a power saw weapon would be the coolest shit, though. You could make it a knuckle that has like a power saw in it. Oh, like, yeah. like a disc saw kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, that would work. That would be so fucking cool. And he could have, like, all of his weapons have, like, a cord and a plug, and he has to, like, plug them into his belt. Yeah, he has a tool belt. Oh, God, that'd be so fun. <laughs> I'd his, be na- all his, his, his name's Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Common yeah. Rider Tool Man. I don't, I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be Common Rider Borland. When he, like, would the uh, secondary puts... rider be his neighbor? When he puts something in the belt, would it do the, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, why, are, why are we coming up with common Rider Home Improvement? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, thanks as always for the monthly content, Swirly Jiffy. Thanks for the email. Thank you so much, Swirly Jiffy. Oh, uh, I think I would be interested in seeing like a nature-themed writer. Oh yeah, yeah, something like you know trees and plants and flowers and different oh, man, kinds doing of like a. Doing, like, a plant-themed rider would be really cool. You could even have, like, a villainous rider that's, like, a Venus flytrap. Yeah. And, you know, you have the entire fucking planet of all sorts of nature, you know, to pull from. You you know, you could go with different kinds of flowers. You could go into food. Would there be Uh, a bad guy that's the tobacco rider? (laughs) Big man tobacco. Smoke up, kids! Smoke (laughs) up! Oh, is that, like, mismatch? Yeah. Smoke up. Smoked. Anyway. Our next email. <laughs> our next email is from Ferris Maelstrom. Uh, 100% a real name. What hey, I've been meaning to... <laughs> Maelstrom. It's Ferris like iron. Oh, okay. Like Ferris Ooh. metal. Uh, hey, I've been meaning to email since the relaunch, but I'm just really lazy. Same. So build, huh? Banjo being an alien and having something to do with Sento's father is an interesting one, though I feel like it could have been foreshadowed more. I can agree with yeah, that. Mm-hmm. Definitely. <laughs> Meanwhile, I've been watching Lup- Lupin vs. Petranger, unlike you guys. For a second I thought it's... I was going to say Luke Cage, and I'm like, what does that have to do with this show? <laughs> you can write in about whatever you want. <laughs> 
Uh, it's pretty good, and the opposing team plot has definite potential, but I feel like it's already gotten repetitive, even though it's not that far in. Oh, that so is, there's your review. That is the curse of Sentai. Some yeah. some just get kind of stale after a while. It's like, well, I, I saw this last week. Yeah. Something. Questions. <laughs> One. <laughs> Fuck. If if I could add, if you could add yourself uh, to any writer supporting cast and hang out with them, who would you pick? Tamaz picks Kuga. Yep. If I could hang out with any writer, you to any you could add yourself to the supporting cast of a common writer, and you get to hang out with that writer and the rest <clears throat> of the cast. Who is it? Oh, uh, I'd be in the pit crew. Oh, you'd be with Drive? I'd be in the Drive pit crew. I would I would join Ghost because they're all such lovable characters. Wow. That's believable. You'd be as believable as guys. Ghost. Yeah, that'd be me. The guy with the glasses, that's me. <laughs> and every time that um, Onari would yell at the screen, you'd just punch him in the face. <laughs> I could make the show a lot better. For <laughs> so you're saying you'd take one for the team to try and improve Ghost? And by the no. end of the show, he just has a bunch of lumps all over his face? I would never, ever hang out with any of those people. <laughs> Kuga's a really good choice. Uh, Agito is also a really good choice. Being around Shoichi would be ten tons of fun. Yeah. And you'd also get to be around the best ass in Japan. <laughs> That's true. Would you be another deadbeat in the Agito, um, like, the flop live, house? I just live in the fucking, like, uh, hostel that they all stay in. Yeah. <laughs> um... Really, I was going to pick Drive, but, uh, but I, I guess me it. and Max could both live in Drive. Yeah, someone's got to repair the Trideron. He can I, be the I guy who repairs the Trideron. I guess it's Rina, I can, but... I can be uh, an upstairs neighbor who cut, who beats on the floor with a broom. Says, you keep it down down there! <laughs> um, Agito, like you... I... <laughs> Agito will be my choice. Have we all chosen? I like before I even had a chance to, like, <laughs> have any sort of cognitive response to the question. You're just like, well, you pick Coogan. And I'm like, well, yeah, I would, yeah, I would pick Coogan. <laughs> uh, everybody knows Tomas loves Kuga. Everybody. Tomas would be Jean. I'd be Jean. <laughs> Jean. Yeah. Jean. Oh, God, we got a long one. Oh, it's from Jake the Snake. Of course. Snake the Jake. He never hey, misses an episode. Hey, Jeff, Liam, Max, and Tamaz. Well, Liam's dead. So, hey, Jeff, Max, and Tamaz. Even though Sento is the main writer, with the way the arc is playing out, it feels like Banjo's the main character. It's great to see the base cross suit again before he got his upgrade, and I'm surprised that we got not only one, but two new insert songs this month. And he gives us some fun thoughts on uh, April's batch of episodes, the one I wanted to point out is that uh, he was he enjoyed that they bring up Banjo being born in his flashback yeah. up again. <laughs> mm-hmm. the, that little window that pops up. And they yeah, smack like, it out of the way. If Sento hadn't have smacked it out of the way the first time, maybe he would have put two and two together that something was wrong back then, but he didn't. <laughs> That's fun. Um... Uh, also, Stark voices his own belt, which he thought was funny. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, questions. One, I should have asked this question to the new co-host sooner. What are Max and Tamaz's favorite RPG setups weapon-wise for melee and for ranged combat or magic? The other references, uh, answers for references are below. Uh, mine is sword and board for melee and longbow for uh, ranged combat or magic. And Liam's was dagger for melee and crossbow for ranged combat or magic. I have played with both of you, and those are both factual. Yes. Yep. Well, Max, well, um, what's your favorite melee weapon? My favorite melee weapon is a uh, hammer. Yeah. Oh, two-handed hammer. Smashing and bashing. Smash and bash. Spin to um, win. 
it, would this be like on like the same character or something? Or? No, it, it, just in RPGs in general. If you're gonna play a melee character, what type of weapon do you use? And if you're gonna play a ranged combat oh. slash magic guy, like one or the other, what are you gonna choose? Uh, it would be just plain, like arcane magic, like sparkly, no elements, just just magic, magic. Magic missile, magic. Magic missile, magic. Yep. Not not bad choices at all. What about you, Tomas? Uh, if I was going a melee weapon, uh, I usually flock to some sort of two-handed sword that isn't obscene, like nothing you know that's three times the length of my body, but something that is a little bit larger than a long sword. Um. My my weapon foo in the Souls games was the Claymore. Mm. Uh, and so This dude loves a Claymore. I was waiting for him to say Claymore yeah, the whole time. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, that would be my melee weapon of choice. Uh, Chaos the only reason... Chaos 2 <laughs> Uh I actually... It, me and Jeff frequently fight over Lightning Elemental, so... Yeah... If if I'm going to do magic, it's definitely going to be lightning. And so if it was a, a ranged weapon, uh, I also like magic users. And Max already mentioned, like, straight up, you know, distilled magic. Uh, so I would say, you know... Magic with a K? Magic yeah. with a K. Uh, <laughs> magic say... that gets you beat up on the playground for spelling <laughs> it that way. Uh, sorcery, then? <laughs> Elemental magic? Uh, if, with if a, it was uh, if it was Liam, it, magic would have an O U in it because <laughs> he, he's Canadian. Uh, uh, take that, Liam. <laughs> we'll see you edit <laughs> that out. Joke. Yeah, if I was gonna do magic, like I like elemental magic. I like raw magic with a K too. But I I really like trickery magic. Like illusion, like, like illusion magic, and like uh, just like turning people's magic against themselves and shit. Uh, yeah. If, if I'm going magic, I'm probably going like blue magic, right? Where if I get hit by something, I can use it because I'm fucking breaking the game. You can uh, you can goblin punch some people. Fuck yeah! Yeah. If if I didn't have to choose a weapon, I'd just choose my fists. Punching. Punching. <laughs> I'd use magic punching. Punch mage. You use fists yeah. in your off hand. <laughs> um, fists in my two. off hand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's the best souls build. Fist in your off hand. <laughs> uh, question two. As great as build has been, if there's anything that you would change in the series, uh, what would you change if you could? Uh... I'm I'm gonna quickly put this out there that I would change Sawa being the traitor again. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'd say like the knee jerk kind of reveals that are just kind of like oh BT dubs Bonjo's an alien and, or uh, what's his name Soichi has an alien inside him. Yeah, just like the stuff that doesn't have any uh, build up to it. Yeah, or uh, guess what? What's her name? Me, Sora, is the Queen of England. I mean, Mars. What's the queen difference, Elizabeth am I right? Hey, uh, hey, hey, it's weird to me. <laughs> I actually like a lot of those things, so I would say that I would change um, the the Toto arc. Is it? Not say The yeah. first arc? Uh, the arc with... Uh, the Ark of the Covenant? The guy that Namba Heavy Industries president is impersonating now, Sato. 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 Um, I would change the Sato arc so that it's more than just the first arc repeated with the same that's exact true. structure the, the of the fight. Battle. The proxy yeah, battle. It's true. like, oh, well, we had a proxy battle. Well, that worked so well the first time, so <laughs> let's have another proxy battle. If if those battles happened on an actual battlefield, I think it would be a lot more interesting. Then inside a warehouse? Yeah. Or on a tiny, tiny platform a hundred stories high. I thought the <laughs> tiny platform a hundred stories high was fucking neat. Because then you... I hated that. You also had the tension of, like, they have to fight on this tiny platform. But 
the problem with that is they didn't actually use that for any sort of reason. Like yeah, there was there was, was no like threat it. of them falling off. It's just they're fighting on a tiny platform for visual reasons, and it never came down to like, oh, I'm gonna fall off. How would you feel if it was in like a stadium? With, like, they sold tickets to it. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> but then it would go so, against like, the way they were at the show, so. So, so like, um, how to word this? The, I've completely lost it. Sorry. It's okay. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Jeff's old man brain stopped working. Yeah, I keep seeing words on the screen in front of me in the email and then forgetting what I was going to say, which is uh, old man brain activate. <laughs> oh, okay, that was what I was going to point out. I hate to go back to Gaim, but uh, in Gaim there were a lot of, like, sudden reveals. Like, oh shit, this is what how, what was really happening the whole time. But, but like, there were a lot of reveals like that, that, like, something was suddenly this way. But the way they worked, you would see that and be like, oh, now all this shit makes sense mm-hmm. that I saw before. And I'm not really getting that with build it's like oh it's this now and you're like well wait no there was nothing about that before there were no hints i mean you can twist the whole like hazard level raising fast as a hint but that could have been anything yeah it feels more like uh they were using that information as justification for later plot points which is fine if that's the way they're writing it maybe they didn't have the whole show written beforehand i don't know um, maybe and that also has to do a lot with the difference of writing styles like because urobuchi like his story for guy was pretty similar to a lot of the other stories that he writes and so a lot of the ways that he structured the that he structured guy was similar to the way that he structured his other stories what, what other stories did he write uh madoka magica is his big one. Oh mm. right i forgot about that I, um, I didn't watch any of that I didn't either. But I hear it's good. Like, everybody's told me it's really good, but I don't know. Yeah, like, the the whole thing with Michi. Uh, there's a Michi in Madoka, by the um. way. Um, but the... I, I understand what you're saying, Jeff, and I totally agree. And I think it's something that could be improved upon. Um, but I, I wouldn't fault the writers for it, because they're not always necessarily going to have the same strengths that other writers did in previous shows. Uh, whereas there's plenty of other stuff in build that I like. Um, but I, I think that it could have been established better. I feel like Tomaz knows the writers on like the X-Men movie and on build. And he's like, don't, don't blame them. Well, no, I just, <laughs> they're I, doing their I best. stick up for other people. <laughs> it's the I... producer's fault. It is. It's always the producer's it prob- fault. It probably is. Really. <laughs> when there's a Miyamoto's problem, fault. it's the producer. <laughs> Fuck you, Miyamoto. <laughs> yeah. um, our Paper ne- Mario. Uh, that might be true. Our next, our last question. The only creator uh, I hate is the creator of Metroid. Don't Aww. play Yokoi. No, not Yokoi. Yokoi is great. No. Um, the it's writer for the Super Metroid, guy? Sakamoto. Sakamoto. Oh. Yeah. Mm. That guy's a piece. That guy's a piece. He Gunpei uh, Yokoi is fantastic, and I would never say a bad thing about him. <laughs> uh, Jake's last question is uh, what's your preferred home setup slash living quarters for riders to have in a series mm. i.e. having their own <clears throat> place like an apartment living at their base etc um, you know I, I kind of like seeing riders have an outside life of what Yeah. so if they have like an, uh, an apartment or like a family house that they go to kind of like in Agito where they have a place that they can just be them. I kind of liked that in Ryuki, um, the main character had a job that he had to go do. And it wasn't just some other thing that had to happen. Like how in Gaim, um, you had the main character running around like, Oh, I need to go find work and I'm trying to make a living despite having to do all this stuff to save the world. Yeah, um, I, kinda th- I think the pit is getting kind of old. I can agree with that. Ernie, there's there's like definitely bar is getting kind of old. <laughs> there's definitely like a uh, a simplicity for the writers that all the characters are always going to be located in the same location. Everyone can always go back there, and the other characters can be there. Mm-hmm. 
I, I just, I would much rather these characters have a life outside of being a rider, and no one does anymore. Like, Sala, uh, to begin with, was supposed to be some reporter for, like, a newspaper, but then it turns out that she's actually some weird child soldier, and now she has nothing outside of the pit crew. Yeah, it's like she just lost her job. It, and I was kind of interested to hear about, like, uh, Emu's life in x Like, he never mentioned his parents or anything. He was a regular doctor to begin with, and I was very interested in that. Like, there's all this room for, like, real human emotional drama and character building from being a doctor, let alone being a writer. That can, that's, if it was a separate thing, but then they were just like, nah, he's a writer doctor. He only does doctor things as a writer now. Yeah. And I did like when he did, like, surgery with, um, Hero and stuff like that. That was kind of neat. He did that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not making that up. No, yeah, he yeah. Did. <laughs> he did, he was doing, like, a residency. Yeah. Which was interesting, but they they just didn't do anything with it. It's funny that we're watching Common Rider and we don't want to see them doing Common Rider stuff. <laughs> well, well, it's interesting to see them do things that aren't Rider. If they only well. do Common Rider every single episode, it's going to get stale, and you got to know yeah. that there's other stuff going on that's also interesting. If if they have regular lives, then we see them as regular people. Can you think back at any writer series over the past, like, four or five years where you thought the main character was a regular guy? I mean, I would say the closest it came was in Gaim or Drive. Yeah, Gaim was, he was just, like, a kid. Yeah. He was just a, I'll say Gaim, yeah. Gaim did, like, the regular guy thing. But then again, him trying to find a job and being, like, out of work and everything and having a relationship with his sister outside of being... A writer and everything fleshed him out as a character. The whole dancing thing that didn't have anything to do with being a writer. Yeah, no, which is why it's... he he kind of got out of the dancing thing. Yeah. That was just an introduction to the game. Mm-hmm. And there were all these things that served the plot line and moved the plot line forward, but wasn't just related to being a writer. And I found all that stuff very interesting. And I mean. Drive was a police officer. Like, police officers are normal people or whatever, but he was like a TV cop. Yeah. And he was, like, chosen to be Drive, like, from the start. And then from then on, every case he ever does involves him being Drive. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. The the, uh, special... Investigation. The the slowdown. Yeah. Slowdown investigation. Um, And what was before Gaim again? Uh, Forze. 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 Yeah, he was just a kid. Yeah, he went to a high school that, like, Where, uh, was like, full of monsters. Were, yeah, all the teachers were fucking monsters yeah. or something. He went to a high school full of monsters, and uh, he was in a club dedicated to him being a common rider. And he and wasn't the, in any other club. They, they had a pit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shit. Well, it was a, it was a I pit mean, on the moon. A, this isn't a bad thing. I'm not saying that like having the series focus entirely on lives as common writers is a bad thing. I just uh, think it would be interesting to get a little outside of that as well, like early Heisei. It's nice game. to have variety. Yeah, you exactly. Gotta watch uh, Joe go to the the grocery store <laughs> and uh, pick out what's what's like a, a ripe orange and. What not? It's like, uh, maybe not this one. Let's try it. Yeah. It's character development. Well, that one's okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean... Maybe not Maybe not that <laughs> that much into regular So Ichi kind of does that with his fish thing. Yeah, when he sticks his finger in the fish's mouth. But oh, that's God. Just like a, a genuine, interesting character thing, though. Yeah. It's, it's like, just, like you can... That? You can use non writer related things with your characters to show more about who that character is. It just shows that so we, uh, Shoichi is just a goofball. He's just a big fucking weirdo who knows a lot of things about uh, cooking. Produce. Um, thank you and looking forward to the next episode as always, Jake the Snake. Maybe I should be an Agito so I could learn from Soichi, Shoichi. <laughs> It's so easy to mix up now. It is. <laughs> you said it now, and I'm like, oh, my brain's backwards. Our next email is from Don Piantis. 
who says, who says, hey guys, it's great to see the original Cross back, but I was wondering if there was a legit reason to go back to Cross. Couldn't Sento just make him another dragon jelly? I think the whole Splash Driver got blasted. Yeah. Didn't he make that Splash Driver? He did. Though? I don't know why he couldn't yeah. just... He probably didn't make him another one because they didn't give him a chance to make him another one. Yeah. they all, He was just like, ah, you broke it. I'm not making you another one, asshole. He just had the build driver <laughs> in his back pocket. And... You broke it, you bought it, idiot. Also, this is kind of odd. After emailing you guys which common Rider would describe you, I'm now seeing myself more as Gintoku. Oh, jeez. I am sorry, sir. Ooh. Uh, broken down, unambitious, and controlled. That's basically me in university right now. Oh. hi <laughs> oh. I'll give you a hug, man. That's depressing. Um, he even has my favorite animal and my favorite color. Oh, wow. John, he says John Toei is spying on me. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. He's got eyes everywhere. Uh, questions. One, will Utsumi become a threat in the future? Yeah, he's going to be the final villain. I think Utsumi is just going to end up biting it because he's some piece of shit that follows whoever has the most power at the time. Uh, maybe the scan-driven best match pirate train fellows Liam and Max know something about this. What's coming up next? I don't know. I haven't looked at anything recently. Liam probably knows. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's fucking dead, so I guess we'll we'll have to find out on the show. <laughs> Next month. When we resurrect him. Mm-hmm. Um, two. Jeff, because you're such a big fan of Double, if you were Double, what half would you be and who would be your other half? I hope this question won't ruin your co-host relationship. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would definitely be the Shotaro half, because I'm not smart enough to be the Philip half. And uh, the only other half I'm ever going to have is uh, my own hand. Wow. What about your wife? (laughs) I forgot that I never mentioned I was married on this, and I veered away from that. (laughs) (laughs) That's fine. Fuck it. I I mentioned it on my other podcast, M-Class Podcast, available on iTunes. Yeah, She can be your better half. There you go. Yeah. She's a hell of a lot smarter than I am. Well, there you go. That's the most pure answer you could give. That won't ruin any co-host relationship. (laughs) Three, if you guys were to become writers, what would your status, type, and motive be? Uh, I don't know how to answer that. Motive? Uh, Okay, I guess I can answer the next questions. Would you be primary, secondary, or some type of tertiary writer? You could even be a villain writer. What what about it, guys? Primary, secondary, tertiary, or villain? I, I would hate to be t- tertiary. No one wants to be a tertiary suck. writer. Uh, yeah, I would be. Um, God, what was the name of that guy from Ryuki? Um, Scissors. Shit. <laughs> no, he was like later. Oh, you mean uh, Raya? No, he was a, kind of a bad guy. The air like, up there he, with Kevin Bacon. He had a technology. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like the technological suit. Oh, Zolda? <sighs> no, he was, he's like black. Uh, uh, yeah, he's like a guy with glasses. Ryuga? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> he was like with the tiger guy, I think. Mm. Liam would be able to say yeah. it fucking immediately. Probably. Uh, a dumb name. Uh, I'm gonna look it up. Fuck you. Go for I, would, I would want to. I don't know if I would want to be the primary rider because so much horrible shit always happens to the primary rider. So much horrible shit always happens to everyone. I guess that's true. Fuck it, I'll be the primary. Alternative rider. is his name. Alternative, that guy. Alternative. I, would, I would not want to be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be the primary rider. Everybody could suck my ass. I wouldn't <laughs> mind being secondary, but it would be cool to be uh, primary. I would like to be the secondary writer to Jeff's primary. Aww. I'd be flying solo. <laughs> I'm sure Liam would want to be some sort of an anti-hero writer. Oh, well, yeah, that's... Some type of a, a villain that has a motivation you can believe in. Oh, uh, by type he means all-rounder, power, speed, range. Which one of those? Uh, skill. So I skill. guess skill. 
I'd, I'd use like fancy, fancy shit. Fancy I'd be, pants. I'd, I'd be flashy. Yeah. What about you, Tomas? Um, I never really consider myself like speedy. I don't, I don't tend to go for powerhouses. Uh, probably ranged, uh, but I would want to try to come up with something that's a little more interesting than than a lot of the ranged riders we've had in the past. Like, that's true. if you think about Budo and Gaim, like you get the you, you get the little like, fucking grape not... gun. Why don't you just like not walk closer to them when you're shooting? You'd probably win. Yeah, don't I, run at them with a gun. I think it would be neat to be a rider that like doesn't engage in the fight. Like some sort of uh god, what's the like what's a, the name of that guy like a from sniper One Piece? Rider? Yeah, like the guy from One Piece, like the sniper Usopp? Oh, yeah. Usopp? You have a slingshot. Yeah. Soga King? Soga King, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give me that Soga King the... rider. You'd have the best theme song. I would in the show for sure. Um, every every kid would tune in for my insert song. <laughs> I just want that yo yo rider real bad. God, that would be awesome. Um, I think I'm gonna go for power because I see somebody like uh, Rogue as being a power rider. He he doesn't do anything super like speedy. He doesn't, like, attack from a distance or anything. He mostly just, like, overpowers everybody. It, he takes a bunch of punches without flinching and then punches back. Yeah. And then hits I, you with I his crocodile dope. jaw kick, which is still fucking cool. It is. So, I think power would he's, be mine. He's basically hard, man. It's not easy being a hard man. <laughs> For more than four, four hours. If you gotta see a doctor after yep. that. Uh, four. Which series do you think has the most interesting introduction? Like the first mm. episode. To me, it would be Kuga for learning his powers, and Agito for giving that hero a mysterious vibe. He says a few more, but I'm I'm like clipping here. I'm editing. I'm sorry. Um. Like, the learning curve on Kuga for him, like, starting at not knowing anything about his own powers to, like, slowly learning what each does is, like, super entertaining. Yeah, it's perfect. That is really neat. It's, like, the best thing about that whole show. He's slowly developing, like, what he can do. And I think um, think Build had a really good first episode. It immediately got me invested in the characters of Sento and Banjo. Uh, I think Agito was cool because I think like the first rider that you actually see is not Agito. It's, I think it you G3? see G three. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know how much we all love G three. <laughs> Kabuto's first episode is great for how confusing it is and how much it makes you want to watch the next episode for like what the fuck? Who is this guy? I really like the introductions for Double and for Gaim. Uh, I like that Double starts out with this uh, this separate flashback scene that you don't know is a flashback at the time, where Philip is meeting Shotaro, and it's true. Philip is you wanna, like, you, know, you ever you ever ride with the devil? Yeah, yeah. And he has to transform, and you know his his mentor is dying right in front of like it's the whole catalyst for the entire show that's happening like right in front of you and you you have to you know figure out what that means and they constantly reference back to it uh and then in gaim um famously uh you know you start out with oh well you know here's here's our main character but he's not a writer and this other guy is getting a belt but the other guy disappears and he picks up the belt and becomes the writer and then you know so many episodes later you realize oh my god he and that was Whoa. the person that Whoa. came up in the. If oh you're watching this God. and you don't know Gaim, if you're watching this and you don't, you haven't watched Gaim, then sorry. Uh, 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 Liam, can we blank that out in just, the just put in the big edit? Old, put a big old bleep. <laughs> uh, um, uh, but I I really enjoyed in Gaim when um, Kota was just like. Oh yeah, this is just part of the game. Me being a writer guy, and then he realizes, like at one point, like I could fucking die. Yeah, and then that is has, a great realization moment. And then he has like a lot of um, 
he's very hesitant to transform again and then oh yeah he's like genuinely terrified i remember a lot of people like making fun of him yeah he ditches oh he's such he's such a pussy or whatever and i'm like Mm -hmm. dude if you were in that situation you would have never transformed to begin with stop playing and uh yeah that that was some good shit some good character uh, Don Piantis puts forth the idea of a primary writer who's lazy or irresponsible and is only a writer at the time because his power stuck to him. I would find that uh, super entertaining. Like, I almost did with Fives until they dropped it immediately. <laughs> like, Fives starts out that way where he's like, he doesn't want to be a writer and just the girl keeps slapping the belt on him. But uh, they so dropped that really quick. He's just, like, really reluctant to be the hero, and he's just like, fine, I guess I have to do this. Yeah, like, yeah. this isn't my problem. I don't want anything to do with this. I got a life to lead here. Which is actually how um, Jetman starts out with uh, Black Condor, who's <laughs> oh, like, yeah. I got a life, I don't want anything to do with this shit. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to gambling and sexing. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go play my sex sax. <laughs> Uh, our last email of the night is from the flesh-colored ranger, which still disgusts me. Yeah, that uh-huh. is disturbing as hell. <laughs> still disgusts me. Uh, Ahoy, RCR. X-Aid was my first writer series, so I'm just getting used to seeing the movies and specials months after they're no longer relevant. Yeah. Seriously, can someone teach the Japanese how to sneak a camera into a theater? Uh, true ending was bullshit with a bullshittier title, but the another ending series has been great and feels like it might provide some closure. I uh, didn't watch any of that. I watched uh, True Ending actually. Really, and it was shit. Oh, so okay. <laughs> yeah, you um, think that they could just put a camera in a my buddy doll and just be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> my buddy. My buddy. my buddy. Our friend Eric oh. has uh, allowed us to use his opinions on the X-Aid extra material because most of us haven't seen any of it. Um, and he says it's pretty much just not even worth taking the time watching. There I you liked, go. Um, Official RCR opinion. I liked Go Rider. That was alright. <laughs> yeah, it Go was, Rider was great. It was just a fun little little romp. Yeah, Go Rider was a great mystery, and it had this, like, really great sense of foreboding throughout all of it that I'm really not used to in a Rider series. I liked it a lot. Um, And you get some old faces. Flesh Colored Ranger continues. Uh, Something I've noticed is that the hospital that serves as the setting is called Sato University Hospital. Was this the name of the hospital during the series? Are we to understand that X8 happened in Sato from Build all along? Oh. Is this a retcon, or does Sato mean something else? It might just uh, mean something else. Uh, you're answering your own question here, dude. I looked it up and saw that Sato just means student. Oh. It's, a, it's like a teaching hospital. Mm. Uh, however, uni- excite- a, Yeah, university hospital you can just go to. Yeah. However, Excite doesn't strike me as weeboo jagoffs who leave words unnecessarily untranslated, so I'm leaning more towards the build retcon theory. I guess that's a good point. Hmm. Excite doesn't really leave words untranslated. That's true. It could be that Sato has multiple meanings and Excite just didn't know what to translate it as, as well. <laughs> like, yeah, it could, you could be just looking into it way too deep. <laughs> I would, I think I would go with that, like... It's interesting. Actually, it completely destroys the plot of X Aid if it happens in one of the countries of build. Yeah, <laughs> like it just makes it makes everything like it complicates it, the story too much. It complicates it. Yeah, like why is Sato so normal when the world is completely fucked up? Also, like, well, why are they worried about the... building video games and shit yeah, when the world is with, with fucking? Sp- Video game viruses and people? Yeah, that's pretty normal. Shut the fuck up, Mike. <laughs> it is pretty normal. I, I had it last week. Okay. Yeah. Had to go to the Sato Hospital. I don't know what the fuck that means, but I went there. <laughs> See, I don't X-Aid know. X-Aid stands I mean, for extreme aid. It could be... <laughs> it could be one of those, like, retcons that they do later. Like, the fact that... Um, the city and drive is right at the edge of Futo from Double. 
Like, they share a border. That was, like, a retcon later. Or, like, how oh. Agito was supposed to be a sequel to Kuga, and then they realized it would be too complicated, and it didn't really need to happen, so they dropped it after a few episodes. I think the original writers from Kuga were like, look, if monsters attacked, like, uh, Godai wouldn't just, like, fuck off. Yeah. He would be there fighting, too, and they were like, alright, alright, it won't be a sequel. Which is a shame, because how fucking cool would it have been if, like, uh, near the end of the series, Kuga showed up. Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> Paints would be wet. Yeah. Yeah. At least a crossover movie should have happened. Yeah. Uh, anyway, sorry we couldn't give you anything a little bit more substantial, Flesh Colored Ranger, but your name uh, uh-huh. turns my stomach. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> no, thank you for writing it. I re- well, really appreciate it. Thanks for the thank queries. You. Yeah, thank you guys all for your emails. We really appreciate them. We, we love answering questions. Gives us more to Some, talk about. More to think it about. It does. It makes our program over two hours long, <laughs> responding to all your emails. But uh, it's a good two hours, I think. Do you guys have any closing thoughts on this episode of Rider Club Radio? Uh, <laughs> smoke if you got them. Build is Don't. still as strong as ever, and I hope that nothing bad happens. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot of room for things to happen, and um, just even speculating about it is is kind of exciting and also worrisome at the same time. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of balls up in the air. Like the juggling act is great, but I'm a little bit worried that they're going to start dropping them. But. Um, yeah, either way, it'll be interesting to see what happens, and, uh... Yeah, I'm pretty optimistic about it, though. I think they're gonna wrap this show up fairly well. Yeah, Yeah, and if they do, like, this will easily have been, like, the most consistently good writer show that's ever been made. Like, every other show (laughs) had these... These these up points and these down points, or just never really hit a a strong point for me. Um, That is a brazen claim to make sir and i hope you're right (laughs) i really hope i'm right i don't want to be proven wrong (laughs) i'm really hoping that there isn't any sort of like um oh what's the word i'm thinking of fuck up no like recoil or something so like this series was so good that the next series is gonna be absolute garbage oh god yeah there's always that hyperbole there's always that risk, right? <laughs> like, they, they spent all their resources and good writing on this series, and it's just like... I don't even think it's here. a... I don't think it's even a risk at this point. It feels like a sacrifice. Like, you have to draw yeah. the energy, the good energy for a show from next year's energy, and then you pay the price for the next year's show. Bill you know, is just if, a succubus. If the next season... If, like, next year's writer is terrible, then I'm peace enough fuck out i'm not going through ghost again for this shit hey think about it now you had gaim and then oh before gaim was wizard not forze yeah uh oh, that's that's how memorable see, wizard is by the yeah, way see how forgetful yeah god i'm sure there's already an email waiting for us with yeah, that's yeah. Red. like it's not fucking gaim you idiot um i was gonna say if you think about it we had gaim and then gaim was so good we we're like oh well drive can't be any good and then drive was pretty good and so then yeah. we got Ghost. Yeah, Ghost was the sacrificial series. We had to, we had to make up for two good shows in a row, so we got Ghost. Yeah, X Egg was pretty good, and Build's pretty darn good too. So, uh oh, Kamen Rider Ghost RX. Here we go. Oh, oh no, God, <laughs> that would be the worst thing. I would just throw my computer out the window. I don't think they would do that. <laughs> Get it away I don't even from think me. Ghost is popular in Japan. Ghost was a little bit more popular than you would imagine in Japan. Like, kids ate that shit up. Hmm. Scary, I know. Well, I think at least X-Aid was more popular than Ghost, so... I don't know, actually. They don't Uh, know. I don't know those too young to remember. (laughs) They missed out. (laughs) Um, I would like to take this opportunity to tell everyone about Jesus Christ, our Lord's (laughs) (laughs) Savior. Um... I'd like to take this opportunity to tell everybody uh, that I'm on another podcast. Uh, It's called M-Class Podcast, and it's about Star Trek. If you've ever liked Star Trek or wanted to get into Star Trek, M-Class Podcast is a great gateway drug 
It's cool. I listen to it. I like Star Trek. If I had a SoundCloud, this is where I would plug it. Yeah, plug your SoundClouds. <laughs> uh, M-Class Podcast stars me and my buddy Josh Henderson from Continue Show. So if you like that, or Star Trek, or if you want to, um, like, just patronize me. If you want to like, listen to Jeff talk about something he actually enjoys. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> I love and, Kamen Rider. I got all you motherfuckers into it. <laughs> And Liam is going to cut all this out. Yeah, he probably will. <laughs> um, I'd just like to tell everybody about that. I'd also like to thank everyone who wrote in to us today. And if you'd like your email read on the air, you can send it to us at riderclubradio at gmail.com. And you can follow us on the Twitter. Where we all this... tweet too much. No, we, we tweet so much that your feed, you'll just you'll just throw up. Just go When's ahead and follow us and then mute any us. Of us. Call it good. When's the last time any of us followed the uh, tweeted from the Ryder Club that, Radio? That's, that's the joke, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's just at uh, is it at Ryder Club Radio? Yeah, it's just at Ryder Club Radio. I actually tweeted uh, two days ago, so we're real active on there. Yep. So hop on board. You we gotta, retweet gotta... a lot of information though. Bl- blow the dust off. <laughs> I don't even think we, I have access to the Ryder Club Radio Twitter. Uh okay. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll make sure you get it. There's also a Discord, uh, which I think there's a link to it on the, the Twitter, isn't there? Yeah. If you yeah. go to our Twitter, there's a link to the Discord in the description, and so you that, can go in is, there and hang out. That is fairly active. You can go in yes. there and talk to Liam because he's in there every day. Yeah. He's in there constantly. You just can't shut that guy up. Nope. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and we will be back in one month's time, four weeks, with another episode of Rider Club Radio. Thanks, Bye. Bye, everybody. Love you. He does. He does. That was great. Give me another.